Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I'm calling this meeting to order this January 24th, 2023 hybrid administrative meeting of the Board of County Commissioners to order. And I apologize um, for the delay. We had some very difficult technical <laughs> problems. We are starting from the beginning, from the top again. So apologies to you in the audience. We'll try to be um, efficient in our language and move quickly through um, to catch up to our timing. Thank you. Um, so we have a uh, moment of silence and a pledge of allegiance. Did you want to make a... And uh, 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 Vice Chair Barboa has a brief statement before the moment of silence. Thank you, Madam Chair. I know this will be a repeat, but it's never too much to honor um, our families. Um, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the victims and the survivors of the mass shootings in Half Moon Bay and Monterey Park. Gun violence is far too common in our country. There have already been 30 mass shootings in the United States this year. As Commissioner for District 3, I have, I the, have honor the honor of representing, representing the International District. The International District is home to people from all over the world, including many Asians and Asian Americans. Many of the victims and survivors of the, these terrible acts of violence are Asian and Asian American. Many are immigrants. These attacks come during Lunar New Year celebrations when many people of Asian descent gather to be with loved ones and welcome in prosperity and joy. I'm sending my love and support. Be gentle with yourselves to all those impacted, including to our local communities by this violence and grief. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Now I'll ask for a moment of silence. Please stand for the pledge. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Uh, item three on the agenda announcements and additions or changes to the agenda, County Manager. Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, and Commissioners, we have changes. The first one is item 3A, opposing the transportation of high-level re retroactive waste resolution to be added to the agenda as item 8G, under adoption of resolution. Item 3B, affordable clean energy resolution to be added to the agenda as item 8H, under adoption of resolution. And item 3C, sustainability and climate action plan updates resolution to be added to the agenda as item 8I under adoption of resolution. And Madam Chair, a vote is required for the changes. Thank you. Madam Chair, I make a motion to adopt the changes to the agenda. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The agenda has been approved as amended. Madam Chair, may I make a point of personal privilege? Yes. Commissioner Benson. Thank you. As a resident of Bernalillo County and elected official representing constituents in the city of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County, I was shocked and dismayed to learn that a perpetrator is accused of orchestrating politically motivated attacks, the firing of gunshots that hit the homes of several elected officials, including the home of one of my colleagues here on the dais tonight, Commissioner Barboa, and the home of one of my former colleagues, Commissioner Debbie O'Malley, who's terminated in December. These colleagues are also my friends, and I would have been heartbroken if anybody had been hurt. This kind of violent activity is senseless and shameful, and I want to publicly state how saddened, frustrated, and disturbed I am about this. I'm thankful, however, that by the grace of God, no one was physically injured, and that the perpetrator has been arrested and is behind bars waiting for his trial. I want to thank the law enforcement 
and our community for working together to make arrests in this case and for continuing to work collaboratively in the successful prosecution of alleged offenders. And what can we learn from this? My wish is for each of us to earnestly work harder to respect one another, even when we don't agree. We don't always have to agree. In fact, the sharing of different viewpoints is healthy and part of what makes our country so great. Learning about different viewpoints often leads to better understanding and practical solutions. I understand this perpetrator disagreed with the outcome of his election. I want to applaud those who have concerns with our election and have come to voice their concerns peacefully, even if passionately. Turning to violence with an intent to harm others when we don't get our way is never acceptable and has no place in a civilized society. We can and must do better for all our sake. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Item four on the agenda, proclamations. County Manager Marcus Baca. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to take a moment to recognize our commissioners. So without your support, we wouldn't be in this beautiful building and in this beautiful chambers. Um, and we wouldn't have our in-house clinic serving our employees, saving lives, keeping them healthy, and coming to, uh, and them being able to come to work daily, and now caring for their families. So the idea of offering a clinic um, in our headquarters was an idea that we thought about a few years ago, and in the planning stages, um, not only just to add benefits to recruit employees, but it was to provide convenient and impactful, uh, an convenient and impactful resource to promote employee health and wellness and support our most valuable resource, and that's our staff. So tonight's uh, recognition is a testimony of the clinic's amazing work and service, demonstrating that we, we really did make the right decision a few years ago. And you made the right decision to support this initiative. And, and again, I just want to thank you for that. So I encourage um, all employees to take advantage um, of the services they provided. I have personally they are great, um, second to none. Um, and Marissa in particular and Crystal and their staff, uh, they've done a fantastic job. So at this time, um, I would like to read the um, acknowledgement. So um, this is acknowledging that Marissa Romero is a certified family nurse practitioner. Where are you? There you go. Come up, why don't you come up, Marissa, so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> And she did not want us to do this because that's just the way that Marissa is. She didn't want the recognition. Um, so Mar Marissa Romero is a certified family nurse practitioner, doctor of pharmacy, and a certified lactation counselor serving county uh, employees and their families at the Burnco Wellness Center located, at, located in the Bernalillo County at Alvarado Square and acknowledging that Marissa Romero an employee of Quad Med has been serving county employees since the opening of Alvarado Square and has already impressed many of her medical, many with her medical knowledge and professional in caring for them and acknowledging that on December 22nd, 2022, a Bernalillo County employee bought his six year old son into the Burn, Burn Co Wellness Center with a serious eye infection and was seen and assessed by. Romero in a very thorough and extremely caring way and acknowledging that instead of just prescribing an oral antibiotic eye drops and sending them on their way, her intuitiveness and deep concern caused Romero to contact and consult with an outside medical professional to further the child's diagnosis and acknowledging that the employee was urged to seek emergency medical care for his son at UNMH where the child was hospitalized for several days, diagnosed with a life-threatening strep A infection in his blood, a sinus infection, COVID, and um, orbital, is that, did I say that right? Okay, she would know. <laughs> Cellulitis, and acknowledging that the head pediatric physician at UNMH that day stated, I would like to give a big thanks to whoever saw the child first this morning. The guidance and care to end up here before it progressed any further allowed us to begin treatments immediately. Great job. 
all the individuals involved in the child's care at UNMH had a sense of gratitude for Marissa Romero's handling of the situation. And therefore, may it be resolved that the Bernalillo County Board of Commissioners wishes to acknowledge and sincerely thank Marissa Romero for her excellent medical care, compassion, and advocacy for Bernalillo County and employees and their families. Then this 24th day of January, 2023, in Bernalillo County, State of New Mexico. Thank you, Marissa. And we would like to bring somebody up that was intimately involved in what happened. So thank you so much thank for coming much. up. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everybody. My name is Joe Lane. I'm a Bernalillo County firefighter. I'm here with my family to uh, recognize Ms. Romero. Um, with her hard work and dedication to her craft, this is my son, Jax. We had a very scary uh, five days at the hospital in December, and uh, he's back to normal. So we want to thank you guys all for the Wellness Center and uh, Ms. Romero for uh, saving his life. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Romero. We really appreciate your work. Um, item five on the agenda, public comment and communications. And before we go into public comment, we will begin with a communication from the Public Safety Division. We have retired Judge Jewell here to present. Madam Chair uh, and members of the commission, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this afternoon. Uh, I apologize for not having a tie on. Um, my wife gave me permission. <laughs> uh, I do want you all to know that I uh, am retired, though, and served uh, the county of Bernalillo as a judge for 22 years, retiring in 2005. And now I have the honor of chairing the county's Sheriff's Office Advisory and Review Board. Uh, and I thank you for that privilege. Um, as is our obligation under County Ordinance 2020-21, I'm here to present um, our annual report. This is our second report to you. As Floyd is bringing that up, let me just pause and thank you for your public service. Uh, certainly tonight is a demonstration of, of the patience and tolerance that you all show. And, and uh, I'm sure this community, as am I, um, is very grateful. Um, grateful indeed, and uh, rather than reading this annual report to you, I believe it has been submitted to you. Um, I, with your permission and indulgence, would like to introduce those members of the SORB, we've acronymed it SORB, uh, that are present and mention those that are not. Um, let me start with our uh, esteemed Vice Chair, Debbie Strong, and, and ask her to come forward. We may be down a few. Um, so I do see uh, Elena Giacci. Is that it now? Yeah. Okay. We, we did have present with us uh, Dr. Layden, Diane Layden. Um, I'll mention uh, Debbie Dodge, Joseph Lopez, David Montoya, James Stewart, and Michael Wismer. We're a nine-member board uh, composed of 
representatives of each of the five commission districts and four at large members. Uh, I do want to especially mention our vice chair. I, I think by my calculation, this board has uh, supplied our county with over a thousand volunteer hours. Many of those, I believe, belong to uh, Debbie Strongen, <laughs> who is responsible for compiling this almost 100 page document. Fortunately for you all, she did do a summary this year. So <laughs> it, it, it's not necessary. A lot of that, 26 pages are new material and uh, some 70 pages then are uh, appendices. And, and so with that, um, I, I think I just wanna say that it's been an extraordinary second year. We're finally up to nine members. We've had, uh, ha having started out in the midst of a, a COVID uh, crisis, we, uh, in our first year, had only virtual meetings. We, uh, this year, have started to have live and hybrid meetings. And so we're, we're grateful that we've finally been able to meet each other, some for the first time, uh, live. And, and truly, we've come together and, and hopefully supplied this community with, with a funnel through which people can speak truth to power. I think that is the intended purpose of uh, you all uh, passing the ordinance that created us. And indeed, it's been a, a robust year for that. We've had some issues, uh, some of which have been controversial, and, and many um, of you have read in, in the press, for instance, the um, issue um, around um, the, the uh, what's, what's the... Uh, Yeah, the television show uh, On Patrol Live. We had uh, some hearings on that. We had members of the community and public come forward and express some opinion about that. We arrived at uh, some advice, uh, some, some to the sheriff, um, some, some to you, and, and indeed it's contained in the report. So I don't want to belabor. Um, we're here. We're grateful. We will stand for any questions that you have and, and certainly that the public might want to pose. Thank you, Judge Jewell, and thank you all for your volunteers and service that's very important to us. Any questions for the Judge Jewell or the board? Madam Chair. Commissioner Olivas. Uh, I just want to thank you all for excellent work. Having been a, a former civilian police oversight agency board member for, for the city of Albuquerque, I know that it is uh, an incredible amount of work and often thankless work um, and volunteer work. And I'm, I'm very proud that several of you all are, are uh, residents and, and constituents of District 5, but uh, it's very obvious to me, having read your report, that, that you all are putting um, a lot of good ideas out there and, and being very thoughtful and methodical in your approach to what you are doing. And uh, I think it serves all of us well in our community and I just want to commend you for your work and I, I want to commit to continuing the conversation about uh, some of the recommendations that you all have made to us uh, as as a board and uh, and carrying that forward to see what we can do to help you all do your job and and help our sheriff's department do their job and, and all of us working together so thank you so much madam chair yes I'd like to please? also uh, commend you um, Jim Stewart is in my district and and he is a retired law enforcement agent and has just spoken with such praise about the, um, the teamwork. Uh, Eric. Commission. The teamwork that uh, has come together, different perspectives, and, uh, and really with the same goal of, of improving our community. So just well done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate your patience in, in uh, presenting tonight. If, if I, with your permission, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Vice Chair. Well, I, I just think, if I can, yes. thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to say, I thank you so much. I appreciate the report. I think, like um, Commissioner Oliva says, that um, we'll follow through with the recommendations, want to work with you. I respect so many of you on the board. Um, I taught Judge Jewell, I got to work with you at the juvenile detention when you were. Juvenile Court and Ms. Nagiachi, thank you for honor. I think what a great board and composition. Thank you for your hard work.
I, I would be remiss, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioners, if I didn't thank uh, the hardworking county staff that you've supplied us with. And so let me uh, ask Danette Gonzalez to stand. And uh, Floyd Boscus, who's just done a great job for us. He's coming from legal. We've enjoyed uh, Daniel Roberson. I don't know if Daniel is, is present, uh, but his sage advice has been very helpful as we've navigated uh, some pretty thorny issues. So we're very grateful for the staff that has been provided. Uh, we had several members of the sheriff's uh, office assist us. I want to mention, uh, you know, we, we developed a relationship uh, with under Sheriff Corn, and, and of course, uh, when when those four heroes uh, fail, we, we were saddened. Uh, but uh, we we've had several sheriff staff members assist us, including under Sheriff Joshua Campos, uh, Chief Deputy Lori Carrillo, Sergeant uh, James Fredrickson, and Sergeant Peter Martinez, uh, um, among others. And of course, now there's a new sheriff in town. So. We look forward to, to working with the new sheriff and, and the staff that will uh, assist us from his office. So again, thank you. And uh, I'll thank you, Jim. Thank any you. Comments my colleagues want to make, but otherwise, we're finished. Thank you. Well thank done. You. Thank you. Now we will move on to public comment. You will have two minutes to share your comments. You will then be notified when your time is up. For those participating via Zoom, you will be muted and move to the waiting room. Should any of the commissioners have follow-up questions to your comments, you will have an opportunity to answer. Julianne, how many uh, do we have signed up to speak? And please call the first few names. Madam Chair, we have 28 who have signed up this evening, five, four of which are on Zoom. So we will start with the Zoom attendees, starting with Trisha Snyder, followed by Xavier Barasa, followed by Oscar Simpson. If you can unmute yourself, please. Hello, uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide public comment. My name is Trisha Snyder, and I'm here today representing both myself as a resident of Bernalillo County and um, as a senior water policy analyst for New Mexico Wild. New Mexico Wild is a nonprofit organization that works to uh, protect and restore the lands, wildlife, and waters of New Mexico. And we are in strong support of the 30 by 30 initiative and urge the commission to pass this important resolution. Um, the impacts of climate change are real and they are here. We know we are facing a much hotter and drier future here in New Mexico. Um, in the coming decades, temperatures are projected to increase by five to seven degrees Fahrenheit across the state. And we know that this will have compounding effects, including a reduction of at least 20% of our water supplies. Um, it's past time we take active steps to build climate resiliency across the state. And an integral part of that is ensuring environmental justice is centered in all of our efforts. As we well know, the impacts of climate change are not and will not be felt uniformly. I urge you to pass the 30 by 30 resolution today. Thank you. Xavier, Xavier Barasa, followed by Oscar Simpson, followed by Camilla Viebelman. It looks like Xavier Barasa did not sign on, so we'll move on to Oscar Simpson. Yes. Am I uh, unmuted? Yes, please, please continue. Thank you very much, commissioners. My name is Oscar Simpson. I am representing the middle, the Rio Grande Indivisible. It's a small organization here in Albuquerque, but it's also one of the ch state chapters in New Mexico. We because we we support resolution AR twenty twenty three, the thirty thirty by initiative. It protects our wildlife. It protects our watersheds and it addresses climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Ms. Feibelman. Thank you so much, um, members of the commission. I'm Camila Feibelman. I'm the director of the Rio Grande chapter of the Sierra Club, representing over 35,000 members and supporters around the state. And I was also born and raised here in Bernalillo County where I'm raising my kids. 
I'm here to speak on several of the resolutions, first in favor of the 30 by 30 resolution to protect New Mexico and lands and water, and to make our interaction with those lands even more inclusive so that every child and every family has access to places like the Bosque and the Sandias, know how to get there, know they're protected in the long term, and know that they're not at risk from the impacts of climate-driven fires, floods, and other impacts. I'd also like to speak on Commissioner Barboa's um, resolution against the transport and storage of high-level nuclear waste here in New Mexico. A company called Holtec is proposing to transport this waste through an estimated 44 states by rail to southeastern New Mexico, despite community opposition. Federal law requires a permanent storage solution to high-level nuclear waste before allowing the temporary storage like that being proposed here in our state. These proposals put our communities at risk along the transit of this high-level nuclear waste and should be instead stored in the closest, safest location while a permanent facility is identified and not be transported long distances to New Mexico. Thank you each so much for your service, especially in these difficult times. Thank you, Ms. Feibelman. Okay, moving on to in-person speakers. We will start with Samuel Rodriguez, followed by Don Trader followed by Michael Jensen. Good evening, my name is Samuel Rodriguez. I'm a patrol sergeant with the Sheriff's Office. I'm also the treasurer for the Deputy Sheriff's Association. In December, I come up here and I shared with you guys how our recruiting is down 89%. Since then, we have established a $10,000 hiring incentive. We have also established a $10,000 referral program for deputies. It ha has some impact. Our recruiting is now only down 84%. So if we keep on this pace, we'll be able to fill an academy class in about 17 months. In January, we had five personnel leave the department, one of which went to Rio Rancho Police Department. For years, for as long as I've been around for 11 years, the county has been able to successfully negotiate against us that you're fully staffed and deputies are happy to be here. You can no longer use that argument this year. We are now 37 short. In other words, 10% of our workforce is missing. I'm not sure if you knew that number. We are 10% short. What does this translate for you guys? I patrol the East Mountains graveyard shift. I'm the supervisor twice, uh, two times a week. During that two times a week, I have three deputies available. What that means is if you live in the East Mountains and you call 911, we could help you. If a second family calls 911, you have to wait until my guys clear the first call. We're 10% short. We've come up here as a union, we've been very cordial, we've been nice. It's got us next to nowhere. I'd like to close by asking the county manager a very challenging question. Last year, ma'am, you, you refused to give us a raise. I understand why. You're managing an entire county. In seven months, we are now down 10% of our workforce. Are you really gonna make us wait five more months till the next contract negotiation? We need an MOU for a raise we need it right now. My time, I have 12 seconds left. However, the commissioners are allowed to engage me with questions. Would somebody please, for the love of public safety, ask me a question about this? Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Madam Chair, do you have a question? Yes, Mr. Benson. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, what are you, um, what specifically are you asking for? If you are a new person wanting to get into law enforcement, you wanted to be a cop your entire life, and you're, you live in Albuquerque, great. You've got a menu of agencies to choose from. You could go to any one of our competing agencies and still live in Albuquerque and start out getting paid one, two, or three dollars more an hour. We can't compete with recruiting when we're behind the curve like that. When you're a new hire and you're trying to get into an agency, you don't care how much an agency contributes to your para. You care about your hourly pay. Right now with Albuquerque Police Department, if you are eligible to retire, at, in order to keep you from retiring, they are paying 100% of your health insurance and they're giving you an extra, an extra $1,900 a month just to keep you from retiring. 
We had four people retire this month. Excuse me, we had two, we have another two scheduled. One person left for Rio Rancho. Quite honestly, we're getting our butts kicked with recruiting. Normally, we recruit, we test between six to 800 applicants for an academy class. Uh, this year, um, we are down to 40 people have tested. Usually it takes six months for that six to 800 number. We are now at nine months. We don't have an academy class. We have zero lined up to fill the numerous that have left this year. We have maybe 10 people in background. What I'm telling you is more people are leaving this profession. Bernalillo County has nobody to fill their numbers right now. And the reason being is we're not competitive with pay. Are there any other questions I could please, please field? Any questions? No, thank you. Thank you thank for your time. You, Mr. Rodriguez. Michael Jensen, followed by John Veltry, followed by Theodore. You had um, Mr. Schrader next. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Why would any man want to own a gun? Why are many men in love with their guns? Why would any man want to hunt and kill animals unless he has nothing else to eat? Why do many men find it hard to admit when they're wrong and to apologize? Why are many men emotionally constipated, ashamed to be seen crying when loved ones die? Ashamed to be seen crying when watching a heart-touching movie or listening to beautiful music. Why are many men ashamed to admit they love flowers? Ashamed to wear bright colors? Some male animals are more colorful than the females. Why are many men afraid to talk about death and dying? Why are many men afraid to dance unless they have booze in their belly? Why do many men talk mainly sports, cars, neighbors with their men friends? Nothing intensely personal. Why are many men afraid to open their hearts deeply to their closest men friends? Why are many men who are truly in love with women afraid to face their romantic attraction also to some men? Why are many men ashamed to warmly hug their teenage sons and daughters? With much help, we can wake up, we can change, we can set ourselves Free. Thank you, Mr. Schrader. Mr. Jensen. Uh, Chair Bach, it's nice to see you again, commissioners. Uh, my name is Michael Jensen. I'm here to speak in support of the 30 by 30 resolution. I'm a 32-year resident of Albuquerque. I currently work as the Communications Director for Conservation Voters New Mexico. I've had 17 years of environmental work, uh, most of it in the county, uh, from water quality monitoring to environmental education, the state dairy rule, a lot of mining permits, and a lot of legislation. Um, the work I've done in the middle Rio Grande Valley, uh, a lot of it with the county, shows me that um, the uh, stakeholder engagement, the willingness to re-envision what open space and public lands and waters can be and do, the commitment to broader access, uh, show that the county has the experience and knowledge to offer the state in developing its 30 by 30 initiative. Some of the things I've worked on that resonate with 30 by 30 include the Petroglyph National Monument Visitor Use Management Plan, spearheading the Candelaria Nature Preserve Management Plan, the county's green print for criteria for open space, what's now called cultivating the county to uh, revitalize agriculture, uh, several stormwater management charrettes that have led to county projects to find multiple uses for that water instead of just letting it run to the river, 
um, community planning around Valle de Oro National uh, Wildlife Refuge, where the county was the first critical uh, contributor to land acquisition. Thank you all very much. And the Middle Rio Grande Conservation Initiative, rethinking river management around recreation, restoration, and education. So I urge you all, one, to commit to supporting this resolution, and two, to bring your knowledge and experience to the process as it evolves. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work, Mr. Jensen. Theodore, last initial Y. John Veltry, Ramona Goldsby, Nicomo Henkels. Madam Chair, County Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Teddy Aguhai. I am the County Chapter Vice President of the Albuquerque Area Firefighters Association. As such, I have the honor and the privilege of representing the over 260 rank and file members of the Bernalillo County Fire Department. I am here today to advocate for these firefighters and the citizens they serve and swore an oath to serve. The men and women of the Bernalillo County Fire Department are trained to handle most every hazard in our community. Everything from active shooter response, wildland fires, behavioral health issues, the fentanyl crisis, motor vehicle crashes, medical emergencies, house fires, and the list goes on. These firefighters are the first line of defense and the solution to virtually every problem our community faces. We were excited to hear of the new comprehensive public safety plan. This is an initiative we hope will help us and our community. One of the things we need most is higher compensation for our firefighters. Many individuals want to answer the call to do this profession, but they can't afford it. We simply don't pay our firefighters enough money. This would also help us recruit more candidates and increase our staffing and meet the national standards that would keep our citizens safe. Much like our brothers and sisters at the sheriff's office, um, next door in the city, we see pay disparity upwards of $3 an hour. We look forward to further conversations with you and provide detail on how we can make a change and get the help we need to better serve our community. Thank you for our time. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commissioners. John Veltry, Sandoval County. It's good to see all of you again. I, too, am a firefighter, engineer, and lieutenant retired. I have a lot of respect for the people that spoke tonight. The job you did as the county manager and that recognition for Ms. Romero was really, really nice. I had three daughters. I would have not wanted one of them to have her respond to them when I was on duty, as my fellow brother did. Anyway, I just want to let you know that I had sent to each of you a packet that looks like this. It's the New Mexico Election Transparency Network. I'm submitting to uh, our Secretary of State, Maggie Stulis Oliver, tomorrow the application for our official group um, that will be our network uh, for application for reservation for domestic non uh, nonviolence, <laughs> nonprofit corporation name. And we already have that reserved. And in addition, each of these were signed by Isaac Chavez on the 4th for each of you, stating that you've received this packet right here, which I hope you'll take time to look at. A lot of work and effort was put in there for you, for your benefit during the legislative session that's underway. I spent uh, the entire session today in Santa Fe and made it here in time. If I would have known we were going to have delays, I wouldn't have rushed, but we made it. I look forward to calling each and every one of you from Walt all the way over to Stephen and everybody in between and talk to you for a few minutes in the next week, ask you if you have questions, thoughts, ideas, things that you can do to help us by talking to our state and Senate representatives who are working hard up there to make a difference around election improvement processes. These are things that as a nonpartisan um, are good for everybody 
there's not anybody that should really argue with the things that are in here uh, because I look at I look at everybody equally when it comes to that. So thank with that said, thank comments. you very much for your time. Look forward to talking to you in the thank next you. week. Ramona Goldsby, followed by Nicoma Hankels, followed by Sally Bears. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, Chair Baca and commissioners. My name is Ramona Goldsby and I live in Sandoval County. Um, I want to say what a blessed day it is to be here. Everyone in this room has been blessed because we live in a country and a state where you have a Bill of Rights that protects the rights given to you by God. I have a prayer for the legislature and for the other elected officials and for the citizens of this great state. Joshua, only in God will we find perfect wisdom. He is the source of all wisdom and he is wisdom itself. Let us come together with love in our hearts and a desire to do what is wise in the eyes of God. If your heart gives you caution on moving ahead, take that as a sign to seek his guidance. And remember that those who are elected as leaders are held to a higher account, higher standard. I feel it is a privilege not, a, uh, not to be a Democrat or a Republican, but a citizen of the kingdom. And with citizenship comes responsibility. Part of my responsibility and everybody's responsibility is to let elected officials know that the government was ordained by God to promote good and eliminate evil. Those are the only two jobs for government. So be mindful of what you legislate, order, or require of the people of your state and community. You will be accountable to your constituents, and more importantly, you will be accountable to God. And I want to thank... Um, Mr. Benson for his call for peace and to know that violence is not an answer because it is not. But I appreciate it when we can come together in unity and talk even on opposite sides of the fence. Um, we have had great examples of that in the past and I think that we can have that in the future as well. And represent uh, Commissioner Barboa and um, thank all you, of us, thank you for your replies. Thank you for your comments. Nicoma Henkels, followed by Sally Beers, followed by Kay Bonkia, followed by Ryan Zamora. Can I call your name if you can make your way down to the podium, please? Hello, I'm Sally Beers. I'm here as a member of Indivisible Albuquerque. And uh, good evening, Chair and uh, County Commissioners. I'm here to... Um, uh, say that I'm a resident since 2006 of Albuquerque. I bought into solar power in 2010, and I wish everyone in New Mexico could benefit as I have. Furthermore, solar generation is a huge water saver um, compared with fossil fuel production and use. Local choice energy legislation uh, would let local government and tribes generate or purchase renewable energy and sell it at lower costs. So I'm hoping that you could, the Senate will pass uh, Senate Bill 165. Um, Investor-owned utility companies would supply the grid for a fee, and those living in the service area of a local choice energy provider would choose to keep their own existing service or change it. Um, Commissioner Maestas in October 2022 at a NMPRC weekly meeting stated the importance and high significance of solar, community solar, but there's been obstruction and delaying by the New Mexico utilities aimed at hindering the implementation of local choice energy legislation. We have the chance to empower our communities, make them more self-reliant, and benefit from more solar generation and water savings. So I'm here to hope that that gets pushed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beers. Kay Bumkia, followed by Ryan Zamora, followed by Greg Peters, followed by Carolina Carrillo.
Good evening, Madam Chair, County Commissioners, and thank you, Vice Chair, for acknowledging the grief in Asian communities during what should be a celebratory time for our families. My name is Kay Bunke, and I work for the Wilderness Society, an organization that believes that people and wild nature can flourish together if we're all united in this production. So often when we think about conserving and protecting places, we think of them as absent of people and communities. But we know that if we protect wild places, as well as where people live, work, play, pray, and learn, we protect Mother Earth. With Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps, NACA Inspired Schools Network, and Center for Civic Policy, we spent the last two years listening to Black, Indigenous, and communities of color, and especially immigrant and Indigenous youth, to understand their vision to protect 30% of New Mexico's lands and waters by 2030. The overarching themes we heard were profound in its universality. Conservation and environmental justice should never have been separated, and we cannot have an equitable plan to get to 30 by 30 without prioritizing the leadership and voices of BIPOC and BIPOC youth. This 30 by 30 resolution is unique in that it was built from the ground up and includes both the urgency to protect local waters mm -hmm. and lands while acknowledging the environmental racism that has permeated throughout history since colonization. By supporting this resolution, the commission can lead the state by believing and investing in community-led conservation that uplifts our youth and supports equitable access to nature and the benefits we receive from it. I urge you to vote yes in support of the resolution. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Greg Peters, followed by Carolina Carrillo, followed by Natalia Dominguez. Uh, you had Ryan Zamora first. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Ryan Zamora, um, BCDSA president. That's the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office Association president. Um, I want to start by saying something. There, there is no divide amongst my board. Um, Sam is the treasurer, and there is no divide amongst us. But I want to make something very clear. I think that the county manager has done what she can to be supportive of the Sheriff's Association. If I've ever called her, she's answered her phone. If I've ever scheduled a meeting, she's scheduled a meeting. Um, and any MOU that has been possible she has helped me work on that and appointed staff to help me work on that. I want to make that clear. Um, I feel that I have a good relationship with her and I'm beginning to establish relationships with the county commissioners and I believe that has put me in some hot water with some of the people that voted for me into this position. I think that you can see some of the passion of that hot water that our board is in through Sam who spoke just a little bit ago. Um, we are in a position where we, we do need help with recruiting but um, I do believe that the county is going to do what's right and help us out with that. So I just want to make it clear the county manager has helped us. Um, I came up here to tell a story. I definitely don't have time to tell the two-minute story that I rehearsed all day, but essentially what I was going to say is that I worked a, a shift on Thursday with some deputies that were going to be forced. They knew at the beginning of their shift they were going to be forced, four of them, going in for an eight-hour shift. And um, they worked it out amongst themselves. They took care of one of their buddies to make sure that he could attend um, his son's jujitsu tournament in the morning by deciding who was going to get forced, and it wasn't him. They proceeded to go to a call with an armed subject who was threatening the neighbors. They had a standoff with this subject who was armed at the time for about 30 minutes. They resolved that situation um, peacefully without force. And prior to that was a conversation about taking care of each other not to be forced. And also what other employment they could seek where maybe they wouldn't be forced and only have to work the eight-hour shift and yet they still went on to do a great job of taking care of this man that needed our help that was threatening people with a gun so thank you thank you mr zamora thank you for your service madam chair could have a, a brief point of privilege yes uh just to to mr zamora's um story there I can confirm I've I've heard similar stories from uh, deputies that I've interacted with uh, that have been on on shift for 24 hours straight. In fact, and uh, it's it's very concerning for those individuals, their families, their livelihoods, and and for our our public safety at large. So it's a it's a very concerning situation, and uh, I, I for one take it very seriously. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carolina Carrillo. I live in Bernalillo County in Albuquerque. The reason I'm here today is because I support the Tori by Tori resolution. As a mother, it's very important to me the conservation of the land, our habits and tradition interacting with the mother earth. 
I'm a member of Semilla Project, a center of transformation using outdoors to activate youth like myself into acting on the climate crisis. My goal is to participate and defend our environment, which will be left to the new generations. Educating and instructing my children and youth people about the crisis we are experiencing from the climate crisis. Living um, with nature has a strong positive impact on my family. That's why I'm here asking you to be my voice, asking you to be the voice of my children and the youth of New Mexico. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carrillo. Natalia Dominguez, followed by Gabriela Carrillo, followed by Carlos Benavides. Hello, um, my name is Natalia Dominguez. I was born and raised in the South Valley and currently attend South Valley Academy. I am a member of the SEMIA project, which has introduced me to concepts of social justice, racial justice, and equity problems throughout our community and our state. And I'm here to support the 30 by 30 resolution. Currently, New Mexico, along with the world, is facing a multitude of pressing issues, climate change being one of the most prevalent. The Act 3030 is a multifaceted solution that will not only help solve the climate crisis, but also help with the underlying problems of socioeconomic inequality in my community. The ones most affected by climate change look nothing like the majority of representatives today. That disconnect between communities and government is why I'm here to speak. I would like to remind the committee that my sisters and I are the ones who will experience the astonishing fallout when climate collapses because of the corporate world today. Without recognizing that we are part of the land by continuing to disrespect it is the same as disrespecting ourselves. It's time to approach conservation holistically and pr prioritize frontline families. Ultimately, the Act 30 by 30 means a future for my sisters where the river is still full of running water. It means clean drinking water for my community. It means beginning to end the socioeconomic disadvantages that my family is in. The immediate action required to fight climate change and systematic oppression that affects all families is present in this bill. This is why I urge you to please support the 30 by 30 resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I apologize, uh, County Manager Baca. Um, my name's Greg Peters, I think I was hopped over. Is it all right to speak? Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair uh, and members of the commission. My name is Greg Peters. I'm the uh, Senior Policy Advocate for Conservation Voters New Mexico. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to provide comment in support of the 30 by 30 resolution. So what is it? Um, well, broad strokes, it's a shorthand term for it, a uh, unifying conservation vision aimed at preventing ecological collapse and mitigating the worst effects of climate change. But at its core, this effort is a commitment to protect our way of life and aims to answer the question, how can we be better stewards of our lands for the next generation? New Mexico leaders, including current and former lawmakers in Congress, continue to speak about the need for a 30 by 30 model here in New Mexico. To be successful, this effort requires state and local action. Community-led efforts to protect our lands, waters, wildlife, and culture, such as this resolution, are examples of a uniquely New Mexico solution to a national challenge. A solution that has proven to be bipartisan and tremendously popular with voters, with 79% of voters polled as part of an annual State of the Rockies report card, supporting a goal of protecting 30% of our lands and waters by 2030. To achieve this, we need a, move, a movement as diverse as New Mexico, a ground up, all hands on deck approach to conservation. As meeting these goals will require a broad coalition of people who reflect the diversity of our communities and who care deeply about our future. This requires us to build an inclusive, equitable, and just approach to conservation and land stewardship and include people who aren't always at the forefront of environmental movements, but who are on the front lines of these communities. To maximize social equity and environmental justice within this framework, conservation decision-making must be informed by the diverse knowledge, experiences, and needs of the people. Why national and state-level tools get the most attention, community buy-in and grassroots support assures the right set of policies and protections are applied and have political durability. Thank you again for the opportunity to jump in and provide comment, and I urge you to vote yes on this effort. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Carlos Benavides, followed by Leona Morgan, followed by Gerardo Cionello. All right, um, I just came to uh, talk about um, 
about uh, John Grubisic and his protocol uh, in uh, dep uh, depriving me of, of my ability to have access to public property. I've already had the cops called on me three times already here at the Bernalillo County. And the cops didn't do nothing because I wasn't unlawful. I wasn't acting unlawful. But as a result of John Grubisic and John Keel accusing me of harassment, they keep calling the cops to stop me from coming in here. Not only that, but they stopped me from even coming in here to have access into the Bernalillo County meeting. And I want to ask uh, uh, Ken, um, what problem does Mr. Grubisic have with transparency? Mr. Benavides, um, I have to ask you to address the chair and the okay. commission, please. Thank well, I'd like to know what problem uh, John um, Grubisic has with transparency. Because uh, I set up a meeting with him, and when I asked him to record it, I wanted to have a recording of it for transparency and accountability. He canceled the meeting, and I had called in to work for that meeting. And he canceled it because I wanted to have it recorded for, like I said, transparency and accountability. And that's what we were trying to do earlier today. Fix the, all these uh, cameras out and the microphone phone so we can have transparency and accountability. That's what all this is for. And the, the Bernalillo County is not being transparent and they're not being accountable. And this is the third time I've been, the cops have been called on me. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Thank you for your comments. Three strikes. Um, I think I got skipped, but um, my name is Gabriela. Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriela Carrillo. I was raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I am a member of Semilla Project. This organization helped me to connect with nature. Nature helped me to connect with one another. We need nature to have fresh air, water, and peace. Nature gives joy to connect with each other. Nature helped me in my problems. It helped me think about myself for once. Nature helps people to have that one joy. Nature helps with mental health. When I connect to nature, I learn new things that I didn't even know. I didn't even know how to get fresh water from rivers. But with Nate, um, when I met nature, I knew how to get fresh water from, from the rivers and stuff like that. Um, that's why I came today here to support the 30 by 30 resolution. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Carrillo. Good evening, Chair, Commissioners. My name is Leona Morgan. Uh, I am a resident of Bernalillo County. I grew up on the Navajo Nation, and after high school, I basically have lived here for more than half my life. And I've been monitoring radioactive waste issues in the state since 2007. And since 2016, I've been watching the Holtec uh, proposal to bring all of the high-level radioactive waste from every commercial nuclear power plant in the country to our state. So I am here to say thank you for this uh, resolution that's on the table tonight. And I kindly ask all of you to support the resolution for all of the reasons we just heard from the, spe the previous speaker. I think that was an excellent segue that we need to protect our beautiful state. And I just want to let you know, there are several resolutions that have already been passed in the state. We have about a dozen, including cities, counties, the Navajo Nation, and the All Pueblo Council of Governors, which represents all the indigenous Pueblo nations in our state. And then this morning, we just got a brand new one from Doña Ana County. 
So I am here just to ask you to vote yes on this resolution, and I can answer any questions you might have. It also passed the Senate, Finance, the Senate Conservation Committee this morning, a bill to um, prevent this from happening. So that's it. Thank you. If there's any morning. questions, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Gerardo Cionello, followed by Alicia Shaw, followed by Tad Naminsky. Good evening, and thank you, Madam Chair, and all the county commissioners for serving our community. My name is Gerardo Chinello, I'm American Asian. I'm also an alternative health doctor and minister. I'm a first generation and concerned for the next generation of our children and grandchildren who reside in Bernalillo County. Are you concerned about protecting your identity, the election workers, and the election process? I'm sure you've heard about HB 110, voter ID legislation that's currently taking place in Santa Fe. Federal law already requires voters to show identification when they first register to vote. Recent polls have shown a majority of all Americans want voter identification. The crime of identity theft has been rising at alarming rates all over the world. Nearly half of all US citizens, me included, became a victim of identity theft in some form, especially in 2020. Protecting these is crucial to protecting our democracy and retaining our freedom. As our Bernal County Commissioners, would you, as our public servants, please consider require voter identification at the polling places in Bernal County. Identification is needed to do most things in today's world, such as the airports, banks, MBD, etc. Isn't about time it's required to secure our vote as New Mexico citizens and taxpayers in Bernal County. Again, thank you so much for being public servants to our community as we the people of New Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alicia Shaw, followed by Tad Naminsky, followed by Eileen O'Shaughnessy. Hello, Madam Chair, Commissioners, thank you so much for your public service. And I'm Alicia Shaw, I'm the uh, campaign director with Public Power New Mexico. We're a statewide grassroots coalition. Um, we are gaining more support every day. I think we have 30 endorsing organizations and that number grows every single day. And we're working to create a reality where our communities can generate affordable, renewable energy that creates jobs and invests in our local economies. And I wanna thank you for considering a resolution in support of local choice energy. Uh, local choice, the Local Choice Energy Act is Senate Bill 165. It's sponsored by Senators Carrie Hamblin and Senator Liz Stefanics, and it would allow our communities to generate or purchase affordable renewable energy and transmit it over the grid um, and sell it to our local folks at lower prices. This policy exists in 10 states. It's proven. Uh, it serves millions of Americans reliably in more than 1,300 communities. And we know that it has the potential to not just accelerate our communities' transitions to 100% renewable energy, but it lowers utility bills, it creates local jobs, it invests in the local economy, it, uh, it creates more revenue for our local government budgets, for community needs, and it, it it's something that we see these communities that have this not only have these good jobs in this 100% renewable transition, but they have lower bills and they're able to um, access a whole bunch of federal funding that's coming down the pike right now to build out this kind of renewable energy. So I want to thank you so much for considering uh, supporting this, endorsing this, considering this resolution. I encourage you to support it, and I want to thank you for all the good work you do. Thank you, Ms. Cheryl. Thank you for your work. Thank you. My name is Ted Nemeski. Do we have accountability and oversight in our, between our government? We do not. Let me give you an example. When a million, million dollars goes to developer for housing, public housing, well, he can spend that anywhere they want it. 
That's what I answer I receive. Money do, non-profits, no. We, we, we cannot stop them spending, that they can spend it, that's the way they want it. So now, let me give you an example. We have millionaires in the city, between city councils. They receive yearly million plus dollar. It's okay, they can spend that, that's the way they want it. That's right. Davis, he spent for his favorite organization, parade for the home, for the lesbian, queer and lesbians. Well, Planned Parenthood is run by a queer and lesbian. He is biggest donor. Well, how much I, got, uh, I get from him when I ask small favor? favor? None. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we get from government average people. We do pay the taxes, that's our taxes. And that's when it comes to shooting politician houses, I don't have any sympathy. They deserve because they are not responsive to the people. Every people, thank you. Three comments. Eileen O'Shaughnessy, followed by Sophia Jenkins Nieto, followed by Ralph Runs. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Eileen O'Shaughnessy. I live here in Albuquerque. I'm an educator and I'm also an organizer with Demand Nuclear Abolition, which is a grassroots group here in Albuquerque. Um, I'm here to ask you all to support the resolution opposing the transportation of high-level nuclear waste, and thank you, Commissioner Barboa, for bringing this forward. Um, a private company from outside of New Mexico, Holtec International, is proposing to do something that has never been done before, to move 173,000 metric tons of high-level nuclear waste by rail and barge and concentrate it in southeastern New Mexico. If built, this would be the largest nuclear waste dump in the world. The risks of transportation are great. Donald Gallegos, uh, who is a locomotive engineer and director of the state's smart uh, transportation union, has articulated his strong opposition and concern for not only the rail workers carrying this waste, but the communities along the route, which includes Bernalillo County and Albuquerque. Um, our group last month was able to commission the first ever statewide poll about this issue, and the results were incredibly revealing. So this poll showed strong bipartisan opposition to Holtec's plan in every single region of the state, over 60%. So this opposition comes with resolutions against transportation of high-level nuclear waste passed by the Al Pueblo Council of Governors, 19 cities and counties, including this governing body in 2018. Um, and our governor, congressional delegation, and state land commissioner have all voiced their strong opposition as well. So in short, the people of New Mexico have spoken and do not want the risks of this dump. So a yes vote on this resolution would accurately reflect the will of the people of New Mexico. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Good evening, Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Sofia Jenkins Nieto. I'm here representing Yucca, Youth United for Climate Crisis Action. I also want to mention Eileen was my professor at UNM, taught us all about nuclear issues. Hi, Eileen, that was really cool. Um, <laughs> we are um, here um, asking you to support the resolution for local choice energy, 30 by 30, any climate reduction, climate emission reduction bills, um, resolutions, stuff like that. And specifically, I want to talk about local choice energy. Um, as young New Mexicans, we love our state and home, but we are frightened and distressed by the addiction we've witnessed to state revenue from dirty energy. We are frightened by the abusive and <coughs> abusive relationship we witness between our state and extractive and predatory corporate utilities and industry. Our communities want clean energy, and we want opportunities to pursue local ec economic development that don't trade the long-term health and livability of our planet for short-term and short-sighted revenue that comes at the cost of human life 
and the stability of our climate. Local choice energy will give our communities the freedom to control our own, util our own energy futures and supplies. We'll be able to reinvest energy dollars back into our communities as opposed to out-of-state share out of state shareholders. <laughs> we ask that you lead with courage and embrace the transition to energy democracy that is so desperately needed. Additionally, Yucca is gravely concerned with the generation and handling of radioactive waste, all kinds of nuclear weapons, nuclear energy. We strongly oppose the idea that New Mexico should be a dump dumping ground for this waste. Thank you. Ralph Rodds, followed by Nicole Alanovich, followed by Sue Sherman. Good evening, Chair and members of the Bernalillo County Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to provide public comment. My name is Ralph Rons. I'm a 32 plus year resident of Albuquerque and of course Bernalillo County. First off, I want to say I was very touched by the outstanding positive outcome of the actions that led to the recognition of Marissa Romero. Um, I have two. Um, Second, uh, I want to mention that I've had activism in my 32 plus years in Bernalillo County on a number of things that relate to resource conservation, resource issues, because we all rely on the resources of our natural environment. And it's because of that um, that I do want to applaud this commission for bringing forward the resolutions on opposing the transport of high level radioactive nuclear waste, on updating the Bernalillo County sustainability and climate action plan, um, supporting the federal 30 by 30 initiative that is actually very essential for us to address our climate change issues and protecting public lands and public waters, um, supporting the state legislation on local choice energy. We've heard several comments in favor of that. I endorse all of those comments or I am seconding all those comments. And then finally, updating the regional transportation infrastructure priorities for Northwest Bernalillo County. That was one of the things that, uh, as a citizens member of a advisory council to the Metropolitan Transportation Plan back in 1995, we were talking about Paseo del Volcan, and there was a lot of concern about um, how that could lead to sprawl and senseless other development. So. I applaud you, and I want to urge you to vote yes on all of these resolutions. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments. Thank you. Nicole Lanovich, followed by Sue Sherman. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, my name is Nicole Maestas Olanovich, and I stand before you requesting that you pass the Local Choice Energy Resolution. As the Congressional District 2 Chair of the Environmental Justice Caucus, a low-income disabled veteran exposed to environmental toxins in Iraq, and as a first-time mother to an infant who I want to see grow up in a better world than I did, we need to be taking every action to remedy the climate crisis. Local Choice Energy does that. Local Choice Energy gives someone like me who needs major work on my roof and a whole rewiring of my house before I can even think about getting one solar panel a chance at renewable energy. In other states where community aggregation, aka Local Choice, is the law of the land, folks like me say anywhere from 25, 10 to $25 are 25 percent off of our energy bills. And for someone like me on a fixed income, that's huge especially in our extreme summers that, can be, that we see getting even hotter. For these and many more reasons, I respectfully ask the Commission to vote yes on Resolution 3B. And while I'm here, I'd be amiss not to also, for the same reasons as above, humbly ask you to support the 30 by 30 initiative and support the resolution opposing the transportation of nuclear waste. Simply put, the risk is too high. We know there's a level of risk the federal government is willing to take, approximately 13 spills on the way to New Mexico. Are we wet, ready for nuclear waste in our backyard? Thank you for having me and respectfully hearing my request for position. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay, let's 
Sue Sherman isn't here, then that concludes public comment. What's the? I don't have you signed up, but I'll defer to the chair. I, I'll allow it. Your name? I don't have record of that either. I'll defer to the chair. Yeah, we'll allow those two. I think I, oh, we received an email, so. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners, for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Ray Ellen Smith. I'm the president of Indivisible Albuquerque, the largest indivisible chapter in New Mexico. Our membership is in strong support of local cho choice energy, which is a component of affordable clean energy. As early as next week, a bill will be presented before the New Mexico State Senate supporting local choice energy. That allows a municipality to become a provider of energy to its cust customers by aggregating local of community members with the local choice energy provider. Community-owned energy providers are key to our renewables. Once this bill is passed by the New Mexico legislature, I urge you to add Bernalillo County to the many municipalities around the country that provide lower cost energy to their customers. New Mexicans deserve low cost renew renewable power. Shareholder-owned utilities like PM don't put us, the citizens of Bernalillo County first. They put shareholders first. Just today, I saw a legal notice in the journal, yep, I'm the weirdo that reads that, um, that PNM is going to ask the PRC to approve another ratepayer increase. It just doesn't stop. 10 states already have local choice energy and serve millions of Americans. I urge you to support the resolution for legislation to advance affordable clean energy tonight and further to ask the county to strongly consider becoming a local choice provider itself when the time comes. This way we won't be subject to out-of-state and possibly out-of-country monopolies who provide us the most expensive energy and take their shareholder profits out of New Mexico. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Joshua James, former candidate for Bernalillo County Sheriff and activist here in New Mexico for a long time on both sides of the aisle. Um, every day, I do my best to utilize my time to read law, whether it's corporate law, statutes, constitutional law, the Patriot Act, you name it, uh, which is and should be your duty as well, because ignorance of the law is no excuse. In fact, I'll read a few Supreme Court cases. Ignorance of the law does not excuse misconduct in anyone, least of all, and sworn officer of the law. All are presumed to know the law. It is one of the fundamental maxims of the common law that ignorance of the law excuses none. Every one of you have committed derelicts of duty. The county clerk has committed derelicts of duty. The current sheriff and past dereliction of duty on many levels. You've been put on notice. You've been made aware of the laws over the years enough. Uh, and in some of these laws that are broken, are actually invasion upon the rights of the people. It's an invasion of our Bill of Rights, as well as treason. I've said it many times, and I will continue to say it. It is not an act of violence. It is not uh, in my intent whatsoever to do anything harmful or evil, as I'm a God-fearing man. And I will continue to fight this fight from every level. I have experienced a fraud, whether it's the my property going from less than $400 a year taxes to over $4,000 a year taxes. Uh, at one point, my property up in the East Mountains was the most valued property on the mountain, over half a million dollars. It's obvious that nobody in the assessor's office ever went to the property or they'd see a dilapidated building. Thank Anyways, you, thank you for your comments. I will be back. Much love and God bless. Okay, that concludes public comment. Now we move on to agenda item six, approval of the consent agenda. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, can you please provide an ordinance number for item G, sorry, 6G ordinance and resolution numbers for 6H, 6I, and 6J? Yes, ma'am. 6G is ordinance 2023-1. 6H is AR 
I is AR 2023-6, and J is AR 2023-7. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The consent agenda has been published and made available to the public. Therefore, I move the con uh, approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second to by Commissioner Olivas. All those in favor, say yes. Aye. Yes. We got unanimous. Yes, thank you. That passes. So, let's see. We move on to item seven on the agenda adoption of ordinance amendment to the county code. Um, Deputy County Manager Shirley Reagan to present. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners. I'm Shirley Reagan, Deputy County Manager for Finance. I'm here to um, present a notice of intent to adopt an ordinance authorizing the issuance and the sale of Bernalillo County, New Mexico General Obligation Bonds Series 2023. Uh, the voters approved $40.5 mil $40 million in GEO bonds at the November 8, 2022 election. The proposed sale of $17,970,000 in GEO bonds is based on expenditure projections received from the responsible departments and divisions. Um, so I stand for any questions. Any questions for the deputy county manager? I just, Vice Chair Barbo. Thank you. I just wanted to recognize um, the work and the um, attention to detail and, and always willing to help us as commissioners understand all the ways that things are working. So I just want to appreciate you, Shirley Reagan, and your team, our county manager, for the work in getting this. Thank you. Yes, and I would, I would uh, agree with that. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes, I move to approve. And seconded? Second. Oh. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes. Thank you, Ms. Reagan. Um, item eight, adoption of resolution. Madam Clerk, can you please provide resolution numbers for items 8A through 8I? Yes, ma'am. 8A2 is AR 2023-8. B is AR 2023-9. Get me to go on. C is 1 is FR 2023-10. Number 2 is FR 2023-11. 3 is FR 2023-12. D is FR 2023-13. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so we move on to, let's see, let me get my pages straight. Um, item 8A, uh, Regional Transportation Infrastructure Priorities, Northwest Bernalillo County. I'd like um, Elias to, um, Elias Archuleta, our Deputy County Manager, to come and present this. This is a, an important item. Um, I'd like you to give some technical um, statements first, and then I'll, I'll make a comment. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members of the Commission. Uh, the resolution in front of you is being brought to update our, the priorities on the northwest uh, corner of the county. Uh, which includes the upper petroglyph development and the Atrisco Vista Industrial Park. Uh, over the past few years, we've seen increased development occur off the Atrisco uh, Vista corridor, which included, uh, which uh, previously included the Tempur-Pedic manufacturing facility, um, <clears throat> the Shamrock Foods uh, distribution, and FedEx's uh, regional distribution center. Uh, but over the past two years, we've seen Amazon's uh, Fulfillment Center and Distribution Center come in, and that spurred uh, more interest in the uh, properties that fall along the Atrisco Vista corridor. <clears throat> Those properties are fully entitled uh, for a, from a planning and zoning perspective and are ready for development. So with that, with those recent developments, uh, we felt it was time to update the <clears throat> priorities for the roads as we move forward uh, during our time as we're seeking both state and federal grants uh, for that. So it's clear uh, where we feel it's our best interest to build on the infrastructure that's already in place and to encourage uh, <clears throat> development on areas that are uh, that already have some 
uh, public improvements there and which may require uh, minor or or less public improvements than uh, developing on virgin land uh, so with that <clears throat> the the resolution in front uh, is prioritizing a Trisco Vista as the county's uh, priority in the northwest corner of the county and that we uh, and it asks the county staff to actively seek funding uh, for improved uh, development along that corridor. Thank you, Mr. Archuleta. And I would just like to add, um, Bernalillo County, and it's, this is in your resolution, but it's really important to me to, to note that Bernalillo County has embraced planned growth as we prioritize our public infrastructure. And so a Trisco Vista truly is that priority. We have, as you all remember, uh, on our capital outlay, a $5 million request to the state legislature to that end. And um, the Atrisco Vista does provide for access to uh, Petroglyph National Monument as well as planned residences up there. And um, as Elias talked about, Mr. Archuleta talked about, um, it really is an economic development driver. So I think that the purpose of this is to restate our priority of Atrisco Vista in this area. And um, I would stand for any questions or any questions for Mr. Archuleta. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Benson. Be, oh, yes, ma'am. It may be for uh, um, Mr. Archuleta, but to do so, we would be rescinding our prior uh, priority. Is that correct? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Benson, that is correct. Uh, as as it would provide, it would uh, pose confusion as we're out, as we're lobbying for capital outlay funds and other grants uh, to show that we have two separate priorities out there. So this would rescind the previous resolution. And why was it the priority two years ago or in 2020? Um, and why is, why is that being replaced? Um, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Benson, that, yeah. yeah, that resolution was at the uh, pleasure of the board. That we did, uh, public works was not involved or consulted in that decision. So it was just purely the board move in for that. There was no. Uh, um, I just want to know wh what we're rescinding and why. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Commissioner Benson, what we're rescinding is the previous resolution had identified that uh, we would uh, support uh, the funding. Uh, of uh, Paseo del Norte uh, for Volcan. Volcan. purposes, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, Paseo del Volcan uh, as the priority uh, in seeking funding. I'd like to, if I may, Commissioner, go ahead. No, go please. I'd just like some explanation before I vote to rescind a prior uh, board priority and make a new one. Um, I'd like to understand a little more of the details. You, you explained this to avoid confusion, but I am confused, <coughs> but, um, Madam Chair. If I, if I may, um, on the Northwest Mesa and, and this Atrisco Vista, as we, it's closer in, it is, it is uh, ready for uh, construction in some areas. There, there it is um, the priority also of our state legislator in, in this area and um, uh, Senator Pope, Senator uh, uh, Representative Garrett, and we, we've talked about the, with the state that we will prioritize the Trisco Vista to, for construction first. We keep Paseo de Volcan in the planning function, but uh, the priority, so that we are very clear, is, is that we, we need to build those roads that are closer to development to our existing residences rather than um, putting money further out, um, causing, I think, Leapfrog development has been ta talked about, or um, this is just a, plan a better planning, better use of our funding now. It doesn't take that off of any long-range planning for streets and roadways. It's just it's better planning. It's better use of our funds now. So that is what prioritization is. The residents that I have spoken with in my district um, would also agree with that. I even believe that uh, some of the development community along Atrisco Vista um, have placed this as a priority or, and are going to our legislative uh, legislature as well for prioritization of Atrisco Vista. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are you clear on why the board had voted to make Paseo de Volcan a priority before, since it is so far out? 
I was not on the board. I, there is, it would be conjecture. Yeah, I would have to conjecture too, and I um, yeah, would like it, some clarity on why it was a priority, because it is further out, and uh, if we're going to rescind a priority, it seems odd that it would have been a priority, uh, especially without any knowledge. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Benson, again, uh, and when that resolution came forward, uh, Public Works wasn't consulted on that. However, from Public Works side of things, uh, <clears throat> right now in the in the long range plan from the metro from the Metropolitan uh, uh, Planning Organization, uh, Paseo Volcan has is approved and included in the long range plan for right of way preservation only. Um, <clears throat> it is not uh, it's not approved for design or construction. So at this point, again, we have infrastructure in place along the Atrisco Vista corridor. Uh, and from I-40 to Double Eagle Airport, the Atrisco Vista uh, <clears throat> is re it has been reconstructed on its permanent alignment so that it could be easily expanded to a four-lane facility. So what's constructed out there from I-40 to Double Eagle Airport are the ultimate southbound lanes, the two, two lanes that would form the southbound lanes in a four-lane section. So as we go to expand, uh, the right of way is already in place and we really just need to kind of mirror the section that's already constructed as we move forward. Uh, <clears throat> the project that we have right now for priority is a $12 million project, which actually does that same reconstruction from Double Eagle Airport to Paseo del Norte. Uh, so what we would do is we would reconstruct the, uh, the rural section that is established there right now uh, would actually remove that, replace it, build it on the alignment that again would serve as the ultimate uh, southbound lanes for a four lane section. So once that's completed, as demand increases, we can just add the, the additional uh, two lanes as we move forward and then would have a, a, a full complete street as we go up there. Because as we're constructing this, we're building uh, <clears throat> not just the driving lanes, we're building in a, a bike lane, wide and shoulder, and uh, ultimately we'll be putting in a multi-use trail along the east side of the, the roadway. And that would extend all the way from I-40 up to Paseo del Norte. And so with that, uh, with, with regard to where we are today in all of our construction prices and everything that's escalating, um, we feel it's better to, again, build on the infrastructure that we have. Um, <clears throat> again, we do, in the resolution, we continue to support DOT's efforts for that long-range planning in the area, uh, which would include the uh, ongoing uh, acquisition efforts that they are doing. Um, and that is uh, a good point to be made is uh, Paseo de Volcan is, is not a county facility. That is a state facility, and it is a state project at this point. Thank you, Mr. Archuleta, and, and uh, Commissioner Benson. I would I would just also say again that this is this is planned growth. It, this is this is a smart use of our effort up at the state uh, in 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 leveraging um, state money, federal money. When we look take a look at uh, infill, in this case, it's not infill, but it is is prioritizing roadways that are closer to where the development is and and rooftops are now rather than prioritizing something that truly is down the road no meta you know no pun intended but um it, it i think this is a, a smart uh use of our energy to communicate our priorities and it's better planning any other questions for mr uh, vice chair bubble oh. Uh, no, I, I just, I think it's smart to prioritize. Um, and also, like, I realized in this position as county commissioner that there's only, like, we can will something as the board of commissions, but things are still in process. We're still waiting for supplies and materials, and we have to rely on the, you know, knowledge of our, of our departments to say this is what we can get done, and this is what, in a larger plan, um, needs to be prioritized. So thank you for explaining that to us as well. Else? Madam Chair. Commissioner Olivas. I want to thank uh, Madam Chair Baca and our Public Works Department for working on this. I think this is really important to, to set realistic priorities when we're looking at our huge ask list from uh, the state legislature. We have a similar list for the federal government. And then, of course, when we look at our gold bond package and all the funding sources we have, um, <clears throat> we're very limited 
in the, the funds that are available to us, and it's important, I believe, that, that we don't compete with ourselves uh, for, for multiple projects. I think it's important that we, we set priorities, realistic priorities, and, and stick to those, and, and based on the guidance of staff. So I, I very much support this, and uh, if it please the chair at this time, I'd like to actually offer a floor amendment that's been distributed up here. I propose to strike page two, line 16 and 17, whereas Bernalillo County continues to support New Mexico Department of Transportation's effort to secure right away for future Paseo del Volcan and replace with, whereas Bernalillo County continues to support the New Mexico Department of Transportation efforts in long range planning for an effective roadway network on the west side. Uh, and add, whereas Bernalillo County has affirmed its commitment to the development of complete streets that recognize the value of transportation corridors designed for multimodal use per the adoption of Bernalillo County complete streets ordinance in the Bernalillo County code Bernalillo County is committed to ensure the design, engineering, and construction of Atrisco Vista Boulevard complies with the provisions of the Complete Streets Ordinance. And one last add to page two, line 22, uh, Atrisco Vista Boulevard in accordance with the Complete Streets Ordinance article uh, section numbers to follow. And I think that, uh, that so I make the, the motion. It's been moved and seconded. I'll second that. And I just, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner. And I just wanted to, to urge my colleagues' support on this. I think it, it adds um, a commitment that doesn't necessarily need to be stated, but I think it's, it's really important for us to recommit to the Complete Streets program that, that uh, recognizes the importance of multimodal transportation corridors that incorporate uh, cycling, pedestrians, all forms of transportation as, as an important piece of the network. Uh, we do have a, a Complete Streets ordinance in this. Um, builds on that and, and layers in there our, our recognition of support for that as it applies to this specific project. Thank you. Any other discussion? So I have to ask for some help here. Do we we vote on this resolution as amended with these floor amendments, or do we? What's the, the parliament? Motion. I said it's been seconded, the motion. For the for amendment. The, for the amendment. Okay, floor amendment. So vote on the amendment, and then vote as amended. Thank yeah. you, Julianne. So um, I call for a, a vote on the <coughs> amendment as read by Commissioner Olivas. Uh, seconded by myself. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Madam Chair, may I? Yes. I think this amendment is great. I love it. Uh, this, I would like some clarity to this same level with the um, rescinding of the um, prior priority, uh, just so that I know that we're not just willy-nilly making priorities based on which well, let, let, uh, since it's been moved and seconded, and you voted yes on that, shall Absolutely. we? So we'll move to the full resolution um, now. So the, it's now before us is the resolution as amended. And I will move, um, and do I have a second for the second. full resolution as amended? Thank you. So discussion, Commissioner. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the... Uh, the clarity here is to prioritize the entire west side and not just one road, which I think is is uh, effective. It doesn't hamstring us and, and tie our hands. Um, that's my only uh, concern here is not uh, to um, combine with the state, combine resources. I think it makes sense, um, the priority that we're sitting here. Um, it's just a shame that uh, I'm not able to be told why there was a priority before. And that, I mean, I, I know several of the commissioners that were on the commission at the time, one of which is not here right now, but, um, you know, it's just kind of unclear tonight. Well, the one thing that I would add to what Mr. Archuleta, and you might have more to say about this, but uh, I think uh, to repeat something you said, that so I, I sit on the COG, and the COG has identified a Trisco Vista as a reconstruction project, and they've identified uh, Paseo de Volcan as simply a, what, Ma what is that designated? Madam Chair, a pavement preservation, or a right-of-way preservation project. So to me, what that says is this is ready for construction, reconstruction, and, and Paseo de Volcan is, is not. It is for looking at the right-of-way. So to me, even our Council of Governments, that, that sh it goes along with our idea of prioritizing this project. So. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. That does provide uh, a little bit more clarity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? Questions? And I call for a vote. 
All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. That passes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Lewis. Okay, item B, um, Commissioner Vice Chair Barboa, 30 by 30. Thank you so much. And I do, we do have a um, former representative from House District 19, K. Bunku, but now who works for um, the Wilderness Society. And I'm happy to, um, I want to start off by saying, right, this 30 by 30 resolution, um, the Wilderness Society approached me last year. Um, and we're excited to think about how the county could really um, play a role in, in, in this goal and effort. As you've heard, not much more to say than what all the beautiful public comment tonight, right? But this, um, as we pass this, it would be resolved that the county supports the 30 by 30 initiative and science-based coupled with traditional knowledge locally led efforts to protect and restore at least, at least, that's a minimum, 30% of lands and waters by 2030. Support goals laid out by President Biden's executive order and Governor Lujan Grisham's executive order and call upon Congress to advance its own initiatives as well as support and assist state and local efforts to achieve 30 by 30 goals. We heard so much perfect comment today. There's not much more to say other than um, we are in a place where we have to protect our lands. I feel super fortunate as a multi-generational New Mexican that I had parents that would take me every weekend in the summer. We'd go camping. We got to enjoy our wildlife, our nature. As I believe Gabriela from La Semilla said right there, when we meet nature, I just almost want to cry about how she said it. When we get to meet nature, we get to learn so much, learn so much about ourselves learn so much about Mother Earth and, and why we need to restore it. So I did want to um, give uh, Ms. Bunko a, a, sec a minute to explain, and then we'll, um, can, and she's also available for any questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair and Commissioners. <clears throat> I don't have much to say. Uh, I think Vice Chair said it as well. Um, the young people really spoke tonight, and <coughs> sorry, I've been coughing all night. Um, really spoke about their vision for for New Mexico, for the future generations, and um, I, I don't think I could put a finer point on it. It was powerful. Um, the, the only thing I will, I will add, actually, um, is that uh, we really took the time, as uh, Vice Chair said, we approached her over a year ago um, with this issue, but we wanted to take the time to do it right, to do it with community, to make sure that we were hearing from them what it is that they wanted to see. And so what you have before you is a product of that. And if I may, just thank you for that reminder. Just also that what a beautiful scene to see, right? Our young people, people of all ages, um, black, indigenous, people of color coming forward. Um, I, I really just want to um, acknowledge the Wilderness Society for taking that step um, to make this also about equity because too many times when we talk about conservation and, and to recognize that even in this resolution. So I just wanted to name that and thank you. And I move that um, we approve this resolution. I will second that. And um, I have a comment. Um, I worked for my career with our city of Albuquerque open space program, and I, I would say that Albuquerque and Bernalillo County have really set a good example and set the stage for the rest of the state in the important preservation of lands and waters. And um, what is really important there, besides the education, which I truly believe in uh, for our youth, is um, it really is a, a um, driver of, of the economy, too, if you look at it that way. I know that there are some people who, who feel that 30 by 30 might be a, a drag on our economy, but when we preserve those cultural places, those special places, those natural places that shouldn't be built upon, we really also improve the developed community around them. And so I, am, I will be voting for this. Thank you. Any other comments? Sure. Commissioner Alvarez. I, I want to thank you, you and your group for, for the incredible organizing and education that you've done around this uh, for, for me as a commissioner, bringing me up to speed on, on what this really is and what it means. And it's it's very important for our communities, and I'm, I'm thrilled to support it. Uh, I want to say that, that you know, the, the next steps are, are important, too. It's, it's not just about affirming this principle, but it's actually about delivering this and, and making this something that's embedded in our policy and our, our practices and 
and making this something that, that is part of how we operate and do business here at Bernalillo County. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to working with you and, and fellow commissioners here to, to do that. And the last thing that I want to say is, is just a piece for, for some folks that, that may hear this, and, and uh, there's been some disinformation around this that I think needs to be uh, addressed. This, this is a, a voluntary uh, program when it comes to private lands. Of course, for, for government, we you know, have different practices that we may implement in, in you know, what criteria we use to acquire new open space lands or, or new parks and those sorts of things that, that are related to this. But uh, an important component of this, at least at the federal level, is the private land conservation component that, that really is totally voluntary. It really allows people to choose the future of their land. If, if you're a rancher and you want your land to be used as a, as a rancher or, or with some kind of conservation component, you have that ability with 30 by 30 to opt into that and, and change the, the conservation status of your land to <coughs> preserve it. Vice versa, if you don't want to do that and you want to, to allow your land to proceed with development or, or whatever the, the market forces allow, uh, it allows that too. And so I think that's an important mm -hmm. component to note about this, that this is flexible. This is about choice, uh, but still operating in, under that sense of long-range planning and, and good governance. So I, I fully support this and thank you for bringing this, uh, Vice Chair Barbara. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, okay, I do. Um, I just want to thank you for this uh, um, initiative. And uh, as an outdoorsman, I think mm -hmm. uh, um, it's needed, especially in New Mexico where our, our uh, resources are very precious. And um, and also we are we are rich in open land. And so it's, uh, um, it's good to get a head start in this uh, right now. So just thank you. So with that, I'll call for a vote. Aye. All those in favor? Sorry. Yep. <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. Passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we are at um, item C, budget, fiscal year 2023, second quarter reconciliation. Ms. Jackie Sanchez, director. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Jackie Sanchez, Director of Accounting and Budget. The following agenda item is a quarterly routine agenda item, which is typically on consent. In accordance with the fiscal year 2023 second quarter budget reconciliation, I'm presenting the following motions for your approval. To approve financial resolution in the amount of $33,991,032 for adjusting revenue entries in the Capital Construction Fund and American Rescue Act ARPA Fund Project Expenditure Budget. To approve financial resolution in the amount of $500,000 for budget reallocation and $250,000 cash transfer to the Route 66 Visitor Center and to approve financial resolution in the amount of 629810 Budgeting State Criminal Alien Assistance Program, SCAP funds. I would like to mention that the FY23 budget was approved by the Board of County Commissioners on April 12, 2022, and by the State DFA on August 13, 2022. Uh, this is mandated by the state of New Mexico state statute section 6-6-2 NMSA 1978. Adjustments of the, um, the reconciliation will be submitted with other reports to DFA as well. Madam Chair and Commissioners, I can read the detail of the motions if you prefer prior to your approval. Any questions for Director Sanchez? I do have one question. Um, um, FR 2023-11, the um, $500,000 for budget reallocation and 250,000 cash transfer to the Route 66 Visitor Center. Can you just describe what that means, what that is, a little clarification? Sure, Madam Chair. Uh, this, 
Um, <clears throat> the second motion is in regard to reclassifying 500,000 operating budget for West Central Route 66 operator to the appropriate fund. And this is to segregate the operator's business activities and the county and city have agreed to contribute 250,000 each annually. And this is for the West Central to operate the Route 66 Visitor Center. And that's, a, that's an existing signed agreement between the city and the county to fund this in equal parts? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. May I ask, uh, Madam Chair? Yes, correct. Yeah, yes, with, I guess I, I hadn't seen this before, the relocation at 250000 cash transfer. That's just m transferring the money. It's not like... Yes, different than what we it's, it's a reclass. Okay. Yes. Okay. Within the cash. And, and is this a recurring a, uh, a recurring budget item for operations of, of the center? This reclass, this is a one time. We shouldn't this have to reclass time. again. So are the dollars recurring? Pardon me? Are the dollars recurring annually? Yes. Uh, the agreement is 250000 annually on both parties, the city of Albuquerque and the uh, Bernalillo County. And, and what is the length of that time period that we have agreed to fund the operation? Um, is, it means, Madam Chair, I'm going to defer that to DCM Reagan. and I'm not sure with that agreement. Thank you. Madam Chair, Commissioner Barboa, um, it's a five-year agreement with five. the option to renew every five years. The reporting requirement for the distribution of funds is that uh, West Central has to provide the county with how they spent the money. So right now in the operating agreement, it's a quarterly distribution of 125 expected for the budget with 250 coming from the city of Albuquerque, which they pay directly to Bernalillo County. And then we disperse the funds into the bank account for um, West Central once they provide us with an invoice. Okay. Now I'm interested to say that um, as the, uh, I guess, so, and West Central is not a nonprofit. Yes, they are the operator of Route 66 for us, so we have an operating agreement with them that we've entered into with them that describes the terms and conditions. And with that, um, this is kind of new to Bernalillo County as well as the nonprofit. So we set up um, some oversight. So the bank account they have is really through the county, but they have access to issue all the checks. So on our records to keep them separate, as uh, Jackie was saying, we have an account and a fund for the West Central activities. And then we have on our own books, the, the we record the agreement between the city of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County for the 250 to give us a total of 500, 250 of our money and 250 of their money. And then we go from there to the book. So it's a sense of segregation to make sure we can account for everything appropriately and not commingle funds. I guess my follow up to that, and the only way I like, sorry, I didn't ask this before, but in previous, I think of like right away for me comes up like PB and J, which provides services to our communities. They have a building that we, they are in a building we own and op, we own and maintain. They operate services out of that. That agreement, as I understand, is because in lieu of, in lieu of payment, because they're providing such great service to the community. So does that mean like services out of this center or I believe it to be like an event center that hopefully will be, it, will those services be free or how does that work in this situation? So it's a little different than peanut, peanut butter and jelly. We're, this is our visitor center in conjunction with the city of Albuquerque. They contributed funding. So what we're doing is getting them to operate it on our behalf. So the service per se would be visitors coming through the state and going there. They also have, um, they're gonna be having, you know, a tap, they have the tap room. They're gonna be renting it out for different activities and things like that. They have the museum. So they're operating it on our behalf, where peanut butter and jelly are providing specific types of services. And so to that, if there is income, does that come to the 
County? Yes, so we monitor that. It all goes into that account, and that was another reason why we want to segregate. Uh, the intent is that the 500,000 annual operating would cease at some point when they become self-sufficient. So we track those revenues, and then that money goes into a fund to offset other expenses that might occur. We also have set up a capital account for them where excess revenues based on the formula will go into that to cover future maintenance and expenditures for the building. And last, sorry, if I may, Madam That's Chair. Okay. Uh, just the, uh, so I do know that that West Development had, when I first started on commission, they were on the news, there had been some stuff, I believe that person was charged and is no longer working with them, but I, some of the stuff that I heard was that maybe they didn't have like two signatures to a firm, like the regular sort of sound practices that keep us accountable. I, do you, do we feel confident that that has been resolved and is? I feel confident that we've put in internal controls. We have a high level committee that consists of myself, Lisa Cedillo White from Procurement uh, General Services, Elias from um, Public Works and Enrico uh, Grotti from Community Services. So we kind of oversee, along with Julie, all of the operations. We meet regularly with the city of Albuquerque, uh, Councilor Pena, Commissioner Casada, and the West Central team. And underneath us, we have another group of folks that do the day-to-day -day and how carry on the activities uh, with Amanda Colburn from Community Services, Denise Benavides, uh, Ryan Travelstead from the Treasurer's Office, uh, Megan Ellsworth from Public Works and Diane Chavez from General Services to monitor that. We're writing procedures and we're going to have those procedures audited by internal audit to make sure we have all the controls set up. The bank account was set up in such a way as it's a, uh, um, they have to enter the, the checks. So that's another way we can see. So we have oversight even though we don't get in there and touch anything but we have the ability that if we foresee anything, we can stop that and, and cease all activity in that account. And it's, they, have a, they have to report to us quarterly uh, activity, and so we'll be reconciling that and meeting regularly. Um, Thank you. So that's how we hope to address those things. Of course, nothing is perfect, but that's how we hope to address those. Thank you, County Manager Reagan. Those are all my questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to thank Deputy, Deputy County Manager Regan for uh, meeting with me this morning on, on this item, among others. And uh, I think it's just important to, to point out to the public that this was a uh, $12.7 million capital project. Uh, originally, this uh, was some of this money was state money, some of this was city money, and some of this was county money. Uh, so this, this was a, a consortium project. But uh, one of my big concerns about this uh, then and, and continues to be that uh, this was really done in the absence of a, of a sound uh, market analysis for the demand for this site, sort of facility and, and how this facility could reach sustainability and support itself. So I understand that this item is, is basically a, a routine uh, budget shift or, or, or change in, in allocations from account to account. But I think it's really important going forward as a commission, and I know that our staff is, is keeping an eye on this, that we keep a really close eye on, on this facility. I think uh, it's obviously it's, it's built now. It's been a tremendous expense to our taxpayers, and uh, we need it to be successful. We can't afford for it to fail, uh, but we need to, to really keep our eye on this and, and make sure that it's a successful project and, and that it reaches sustainability despite the fact that uh, it, it may not have been done under the ideal conditions. But thank you to, to staff for briefing me on this. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Um, so uh, without any other questions of uh, Director Sanchez, do we have a, a, a motion to accept her report approval of these budget items? I can move, I'll move approval. <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> yes, thank you, Judge. And uh, all those in favor? Is this for all three? Right. Yes, I think we, we can vote for all three together. Right, it's all three motions. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, item D, General Services, uh, Deputy County Manager Cedillo White. Good evening, um, County Commissioners, um, Madam Chair. Um, this item before you is a motion to approve up to 975000 in one-time non-reoccurring funding from the opioid settlement funds for the fentanyl prevention, uh, for a fentanyl prevention marketing plant campaign, education awareness training, and enhancing and redesigning the um, developed KeepNewMexicoAlive.com website. Um, the third motion, approve financial resolution, budgeting and appropriation in the amount of 975000 from the recently received um, opioid settlement um, funds. And also, um, last, to authorize the county manager to award and execute contracts that result from the expenditures of marketing, um, awareness, um, and educational training, and also enhancing and redesigning the KeepNewMexicoAlive.com website and any subsequent amendments. In summary, um, the state of New Mexico, like many other states around the country, have been experiencing a surge in overdose poisoning, resulting to unatt unattended use of dr the drugs um, that are laced with fentanyl. The latest research from the New Mexico Department of Health shows that 2,642 New Mexicans, with 40.5% of them being residents of Bernalillo County have lost their lives to unintentional overdoses between 2016 and 2020. Per the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration, six out of 10 fentanyl-laced fake prescription pills now contain a potentially um, lethal dose of fentanyl in addition. According to the National Institute of Drug Abuse, Synthetic, synthetic, synthetic opioids, which include fentanyl, were the most common drugs involved in overdose deaths in the, in the United States. Bernalillo County um, has taken a stance to aid in combating the epidemic of fentanyl use and abuse um, and subsequent overdose poisoning that, is, that continues to plague residents of our community. The county has established, um, in conjunction with the city of Albuquerque, partnering. Uh, we've established relationships with subject, subject matter experts from multiple fields, medical and judicial law enforcement, community treatment, in addition to um, families and those with lived experience. Um, also, in summary, um, Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque in the summer of 2022, we began working on planning a fentanyl awareness summit, which included a four month from October 2021 to January 2022 fentanyl awareness marketing campaign, focusing on the dangers of fentanyl in our community and outreach for those seeking assistance with addiction. The marketing campaign, four month marketing campaign consisted of commercial, uh, commercial billboards, bus wraps, television, radio ads, print material for distribution, and social media, um, Instagram and Facebook messaging um, to target our youth. On October 13th, 2022, to bring educational awareness to the fentanyl crisis in our community, Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque hosted a community conversation about fentanyl with over 40 panelists panelists, speakers, uh, we had over 450 attendees, 40 service providers, and more than 2,000 online views. Our um, eight-hour event was recorded. The event provided education and awareness of the effects fentanyl is having in our community from different perspectives, drug enforcement administration, community health and wellness, public safety, and lived experience. In addition, we, um, with the support of the New Mexico Department of Health, we distributed approximately 300 doses of Narcan and fentanyl test strips um, at the event. Nationwide settlements have been reached to resolve all opioid litigation brought by states and local political subdivisions against the three largest pharmaceutical distribution distributors um, and manufacturers. Um, and as a result of this lawsuit, 
um, Bernalillo County amongst um, cities and other counties are, are getting a, a distribution from these lawsuits. Um, the county received a total of 3.9 million in the fall of 2022. Um, the funds that we received um, do have are limited um, to um, just uses for opioid initiatives. I wanted to point that out. Um, so the request before you this evening, um, Madam Chair Baca and members of the commission, um, is to ask the commission um, to, for um, the use of up to 975,000 um, from the 2022 opioid settlement fund distribution to continue the fentanyl education and awareness campaign in Bernalillo County, um, which will include an additional 11 month marketing campaign which is a phase two. Um, the marketing campaign would start February 2022 and continue through December 2023. In addition um, to also um, funding for additional community awareness training and presentations, and also uh, for funding to enhance and redesign the already created keepnewmexicoalive.com website um, uh, with a more robust web website for those seeking information on fentanyl from education to treatment. At this time, I'd like to introduce Shelley Gregory, um, our marketing consultant, to discuss, briefly discuss, um, what we did in phase one um, and uh, what we are proposing as far as um, phase two next steps um, if the commission were to approve our request this evening. Perfect. Good evening. Thank you. Um, what you said, Lisa, is for the first phase, what we wanted to do is it was a general awareness of fentanyl. Everyone's heard about fentanyl in the news, but they didn't know how it affected them. They didn't know how close this was affecting our community. And the summit that was a huge success, one of the things we first did is our background is working with the media, and we contacted the media. TV stations, none of them were aware of the problem of fentanyl in our own community. And the newspaper was the same way. The radio station was the same way. It was a big eye-opener to them. All of the news media was involved in the summit. And they continued to be recording the stories. They continued to support us. And they all now understand this is a very big deal for our community. So the first stage was including a multitude of radio, TV, cable, newspaper, out of home, out of billboard, and everyone got behind it. The media vendors we worked with, they all shared in offering free, value-added, earned media as part of this campaign. But we just scratched the surface. We just scratched the surface. We now need to talk to the Spanish speakers. We need to do specific media outreach to them. I've already contacted the Spanish media and they're ready to support us. They're ready to take it to the next stage. We also need to do a better job of talking to the young people, the college kids, the high school kids, the parents that unknowingly, their kids are being contacted through social media as they sit in their bedrooms. We need to get to those people. So that's the next part of this stage. So we've pulled it as close as we can right now, and we want to keep the momentum up. There's a lot of folks we still need to get to. There's a lot the media wants to do stories on and continue this fight. These are a couple of the things that we did, um, and Lisa has this information. We have all of the analytics, all the numbers that were reached in the first phase. These are a couple of different examples um, of the media. The uh, and Anthony, you could probably say more to it, is the social media complexes, that's how they are being reached. And so that's a little bit different of how that tone was done on the social media. But we have billboards, we have the buses, we have the outdoor. And again, later on, if you want, you can see some of the analytics. And then, we, there, there you go, and keep going. This is the second part, and we can go on here. There we go. So what we just talked about is in the second phase, we're going to really hit the middle high school, young adults, early 20, and Spanish-dominant speakers, um, also two Native Americans. Um, I think that recently you've had a conversation, even with this letter, 
on reaching the Native Americans as well. So video, statewide TV, uh, streaming services like Hulu, radio, print, out of home, posters, digital, social media, laundry mats, gas station uh, posters, Johnny boards, community engagement, such as the isotopes, and also, too, is, like you had said before, Lisa, um, updating the Keep New Mexico Alive and also having a Spanish tab as well. So that's what we have earmarked for the next phase. I think. And these were some examples of what we're looking at. We're already working on creative for the outdoor. Again, the first part was just introducing, telling people that this does affect them their families, their community, and now we're moving on to the next stage of giving a little bit more detail on what this fentanyl is, how to be aware of it. Uh, the one pill can kill. So that's the next part of the phase. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great, thank you, Shelley. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, as, um, as stated before, if the county commission approves this particular um, request, um, we will um, engage um, our marketing consultants to um, start phase two of the marketing campaign. Um, the campaign, as stated before, phase one uh, was very successful. We got a lot of um, we got a lot of, of communication. Um, from our campaign and we just want to keep the awareness out there to our families and we want to try to uh, prevent prevent individuals and you know from uh, it, taking the the pills that are potentially laced with a lethal dose of fentanyl at this time um, madam chair Baca and members of the commission I stand for any questions any questions Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Lisa, and to the folks presenting this evening. I just wanted to um, address both my colleagues and the public. Right, um, the county supported that uh, behavior, the fentanyl summit, and through that, I've gotten now to be able to work with a lot of the families that are directly impacted, have either already lost or are currently living with somebody um, using. Substance, substance uses and specifically fentanyl. Um, you know, when in the presentation we say it's, um, you know, is an eye opener for the media that we contact. You know, it's not an eye opener for is all our law enforcement, every single one of the hospitals, every our courts, our jails. They are way too familiar and scrambling to try and handle this. And um, and my son who works at University of New Mexico Hospital Security says. He is, and he works the night shift, is walking around, and people are smoking it around every corner. And um, so we, we need an awareness campaign. I've worked in this field for quite a long time. And sometimes in, in this world, folks are like, you know, well, we, just, we need providers. We need clinical social workers. We need prescriptions. All of that is true. All of that is true. And what I hear loud and clear from our families that are living it right now is that they don't have access to anything. They don't have access to anything. They didn't even know. They weren't even, couldn't even hear about this. So the more we're able to spread this, um, the, the dangers of this into our community, only the better. The more that um, what I heard from family members is that it takes them some time, but they are desperately passionate to share their own stories to communities, to schools, and public spaces, because they know that what they would have done to see somebody like them talking directly to their experience, that that would have been incredible for them. Part of this website development, um, sometimes I think, I, and I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm on it, because I'm like, we're not going to develop a website that sits there that isn't live, because there's lots of websites out there, right? But um, I asked Lisa when she was getting this together, like, we have to really invest in this. We have to, this website has to be the place that people can truly access live information. If a center closes down or a new provider enters town, that needs to be up and ready and available. There, we learned in this process that there are other states and other counties that have live websites where you can literally see how many beds are available. 
But those are important to those things are important to our community and as our systems as we try to provide services and address this crisis. But what I heard loud and clear from families living in it right now is that they would have loved to have been able to go on and say, I'm a grandparent raising a grandchild that because my daughter is struggling with fentanyl issues right now. I want to hear from somebody like her. I or that they can find solutions within their communities. Often at this um, county, at these counties meetings, and the, um, we hear all the time that Brent, that the MDC, our jail, is the biggest behavioral health care provider. Yes, it's true. What I say in addition is the truth is, is our, our families are the ones that are holding the bare bunt of this. Our families are the biggest behavioral health providers, and we're not providing them with anything, any resource to deal with the detox, or if they have clues. I've heard from like Tanya Tijerina, that is a grandmother raising her granddaughter, that she has a lot to share about what she saw her own child going through, clues to look for, ways to address it in your own home if you see these signs. So we can only resource this and really give the, give folks that not a lot of people are listening to, those ones that I really believe know best. So I just wanted to thank you and thank all the folks that have been participating in making this important to our communities. Um, and I move that we, uh, I so move that we pass this. Uh, oh, I guess last I want to say that the opioid funding is one-time funding, right? That is off the backs of our family members, again, who have suffered through this. That is off the backs of people who have suffered or died through this illness, and we deserve um, to give back to the families what they're asking for. So I move that we approve this. I will second that, and, and um, Deputy County Manager City of White, thank you for all your work. I know this is a personal issue for you, and this is a really important thing. It's personal for, it should be for all of mm -hmm. us, because this impacts our community in such a big way. We see it every day, so thank you. And, and Madam um, Chabaka and uh, members of the commission, um, as um, Commissioner um, Barboa had stated, um, what came out of this initiative, um, this fentanyl, uh, putting this fentanyl event together was reaching out to um, not just Bernalillo County residents, but um, just community members that wanted to be involved. We got 40, we have four panels and we have four panels that are still very active. And we have, you know, from the judicial panels to the service provider panels to the front line, which include law enforcement, emergency, um, educational, um, APS. And then we have our fourth panel, fam, uh, panel which is our family panel. Um, and all of the panels um, after the event, they all said that they wanted to stay together as a group. They all wanted to work together on initiatives. Um, from you know the judges and 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 they're all um, geared up and ready to go, and that's the beauty. Um, another you know I, I was reached um, by the um, Sleda Casino, um, in that um, they have a problem with fentanyl, and um, they wanted how can we get training, and so one of our our panelists was from the Department of Health Overdose and Prevention, and so I pulled that panelist, and we have a meeting on Friday. Um, to meet with the Sleda Resort and Casino um, to provide um, Narcan training, uh, Narcan, and education on fentanyl. And so this is what resulted from what we created together. And so um, I, I thank um, the Commission for your support. Any further discussion? Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Deputy County Manager City of Watt, for your, for your work on this. And, uh, hearing nothing but great things about this, and I, I fully support this allocation and this uh, this effort. It's it's really critical that that we move this forward as as quickly as possible and, and in an effective manner. And and I I trust that that you're the right person to do that. Um, and I just want to make a couple of comments on the on the longer term here. That uh, this is just the first tranche of of opioid settlement money that'll be flowing into the county. And um, I appreciate your quick answer to to some of my my questions. And I just want to say that, that I hope that we can really work together as a commission uh, with staff and with our behavioral health initiative staff to, to make sure that we really come up with a long-term plan for those, for, sorry, for those opioid monies coming into our county and making sure that those are um, well spent and, and allocated in a way that really puts resources where they need to be but doesn't duplicate efforts with, with our other partners and our other departments. And then the, the last thing that I would say um, is just that 
you know, one one concern I have, though I, I don't think it in any way overrides the, the absolute need for this, is is that we do need to increase our treatment capacity because my, my one concern is is when you advertise something, when you make something widely known, as as we all hope this does, um, you you increase demand for the services that that this is advertising, and I realize this is awareness, uh, and uh, but but treatment is obviously a component. Uh, whether it's behavioral health or substance abuse. And so I think it's, again, it's really critical that we work closely together with, with the Behavioral Health Initiative, our partners at the city, partners at the state, UNM, uh, all, all across the board to make this uh, an effort that's really well coordinated and, and makes sure that these limited dollars are well spent. But thank you for your efforts and I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Um, Chair Baca and um, Chair Olivas, um, we do have um, a core um, um, team led by, you know, county manager um, Baca that is um, looking at um, other um, expenditures, other that will be brought before the commission as far as a plan that will um, be um, presented to the commission for approval. Um, and, and we are interacting with all of our partners. Um, and as I stated before, we're working with the Department of Health and we're working with a bunch of different partners too. It takes a village to combat um, this um, drug crisis that we have. So um, your, your points are well taken and, and, and we are definitely um, in, engaged and, and ready to um, provide a plan. But this, this is the first um, expenditure from that, that settlement funds that we'd like um, the commission to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That passes. Thank you. Thank you. On item 8E, Office of Criminal Justice and Behavioral Health Initiatives, Pam Acosta. Good evening, Madam Chair Baca, Madam Vice Chair Barboa, and commissioners. Um, Pam Acosta, the Senior Manager of the Behavioral Health Initiatives, and I bring before you a proposal for the City of Albuquerque's Wellness 2 Hotel, a division of the Westside Emergency Housing Center, which seeks $29,000 in non-recurring capital and startup dollars to support their Adverse Childhood Experiences Program. Wellness 2 Hotel wants to increase the focus on prevention and mitigation of Adverse Childhood, childhood Experiences, also known as ACEs by creating smaller sub-programs within the building with a dedicated case manager, behavioral health technician, as well as a playroom and therapeutic room on each floor. The $29,000 funding request proposes county funding to purchase new furnishings, play equipment, educational and training supplies for children, and to support the employment of adults and provide a 20-foot storage pod rental. This approval, this proposal was approved unanimously by, both by the Behavioral Health Initiative Prevention and Harm Reduction Subcommittee and the BHI Steering Committee. In accordance with AR 2051, the proposal was emailed to ABCGC and APS for review as a meeting was not held in September, I mean in December. Um, the motions before you this evening are approval of 29,000 in non-recurring capital and startup dollars to support the development of the City of Albuquerque Wellness 2 ACES program, thus authorizing the county manager to execute an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Albuquerque and execute any associated agreements and subsequent amendments, and authorizing the appropriate appropriation of $29,000 of fund balance from the behavioral health gross receipts tax. Present, present this evening is Myra Segal, City of Albuquerque Senior Policy Analyst for Family and Community Services. And I'm also accompanied by Michael Barndoller, who is the Housing Subcommittee Chair, who stands behind me as well. At this time, we stand for any questions. Any questions? I, I just, Chair of course, I want to make a comment. I just want to appreciate you, appreciate for taking this time. I think it's the Wellness Hotel, of course, is so important to me. I sponsored it last year for our first time as the county doing it. I'm glad we're doing it again this year under the leadership of Chief Pettis. And I'm just very thankful for these additions. When we talk about ACEs, trauma, responsive, this is what we're doing, right? L those little bit of things that we can add that are going to be the long-term effects that we see in these young people's lives. So um, I just want to appreciate and say that out loud and thank you for this work. I move. We approve. And that's been seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your work. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, we are on item eight. Did you? 
And we're up next again. We're up next. Yeah, we're next. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. All right, again, I'm Pam Acosta, Senior Manager with the Behavioral Health Initiative. And tonight I'm bringing before you a request by Hope Works for a budget increase of $376,433 in non recurring funding for the operations of Hope Village. Hope Village currently receives $1 million from the Behavioral Health Initiatives under the current contract. Hope Village is a single site housing community that provides permanent shelter to Bernalillo County adults ages 18 and older who have been diagnosed with a serious mental illness who are homeless or precariously housed, who have been unsuccessful in maintaining scattered site housing and currently lack alternative supportive housing options. Hope Village provides on-site case management and group programming. The 376,433 budget increase, if approved, would be applied to their current contract year for a total of 1,376,433. Hope Works is on their second year of their awarded contract Future funding will be evaluated prior to the contract end. This proposal was presented to the BHI's housing, Supportive Housing Subcommittee where it underwent a month-long review of supporting documents. It was, it was recommended to move to the steering committee by all members except for one. The steering committee reviewed the documents and all present recommended the housing, the, recommended the request move forward through the process. In accordance with AR 2020-51, the proposal was emailed to ABCGC plus APS for review as a meeting was not held in December. Um, the motion before you this evening is as follows. Approval of a budget increase in the amount of 376,433 in non-recurring funding, thus authorizing the county manager to execute any associated agreements and subsequent amendments to this agreement and approve $376,433 of fund balance from the behavioral health gross receipts tax. Present this evening, um, right with me is Michael Barndoller, who is our housing subcommittee chair, and as well as the vice chair of our steering committee. And we stand for any questions. Mr. Barndoller, do you have anything to add to the, any comments? Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the commission, um, this, this was an interesting process and proposal for us. The initial proposal came through from Hope Works for Hope Village with a significant increase, which was complicated and hard for us to quite understand. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I do want to thank the um, Hope Works staff, their executive director, because working with our staff, behavioral health initiative staff, and our volunteers, looking at far more supportive documentation of the need for the request, um, we were able to move it forward. This is a critical program, a part of the housing continuum. It's a critical program. One of the things that Pam didn't mention um, is a lot of these people are also criminally justice involved. And this takes people off the street that you hear about, that you read about on a daily basis in the Albuquerque Journal or see on TV. So this is a critical program. And we are really grateful that we're able to really move this through the system and bring this to you tonight. It's a, you know, I, I really do ask for your support. Thank you very much. Any comments? Vice Chair Barpo. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, just want to say, I, I think I want to also just repeat what um, Mr. Barndall has said, right? Hope Works has proven to provide excellent services to folks that almost nobody else will take including many of our own services, including oftentimes the psych ward at the university hospital because of co-occurring disorders or who knows what or why. But HopeWorks is doing the job um, and we could use 15, 20, probably more of them. Um, so I think this increase to do that kind of intent that keeps people safe, keeps our community safe um, and provides the kind of services needed. Um, we've done a, a great effort to decrease the number of people going to jail just simply because of the substance use or um, because of mental health issues. And this is one of the ways that we're covering that so that it's not that continual cycle through jail. So I just really uh, support this effort. Thank you all for doing your due diligence and poking in and digging in and um, making sure that we're spending dollars in the right way. I thank you so much for that. Um, and I, I support this. I move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other comments? Madam Chair. Oh, yes, Mr. Uh, I just want to 
commend our, our staff and our subcommittees looking through all of this information that we were given on this agenda item. Uh, it's very clear that, that you asked some tough questions, but some important questions, and I, I followed up with Ms. Acosta on several of these items. And I think it's it's clear that, that at least this commissioner and, and you all are, are in alignment on this and, and looking at these contracts and making sure that we have provisions in place that support these programs and support these uh, important clients that need to be served, but also so further the mission of the BHI. And I think uh, one of the, the sticking points in here that, that you all dug into very deeply is, is sustainability. And it's really important that programs seeded uh, through the BHI are sustainable and eventually become um, self-funded or funded through, through outside sources because uh, while $25 million a year that we have coming in every year in, in the gross receipts tax for the BHI seems like a lot of money, when you look at this initiative alone, this is uh, a little over 5% of that total that's going to one provider that's serving uh, 40 clients. That's, that's a huge expenditure. But I realize this is a, a, an incredibly difficult client population that, that needs intensive services, intensive case management. And so I, I'm glad to see that our subcommittees and our staff is, is focused on that and asking the right questions and providing technical assistance to vendors like HopeWorks and Hope Village to move them from um, you know, the, the sort of initial phase to, to being sustainable and being self-supporting, because that's the only way that, that we're going to be able to grow the provider network in the state of New Mexico and certainly here in Bernalillo County is, is by moving in that direction. So uh, I'm very pleased to, to see so many of, of these questions were asked. And uh, I, I would just encourage you all to, to continue your work, continue diving into these contracts. And uh, I think it, doing that due diligence really will serve our community and, and serve the populations that we all seek to help. Thank you. Okay, we call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very Aye. much. Thank you very much. And Madam Chair, if I may interrupt briefly, if I could have the clerk issue the remaining of the resolution numbers. Please. Yes, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Okay. I apologize. That's fine. Uh, e number two is FR 2023-14. F2 is FR 2023-15. G is AR 2023-16. H is AR 2023-17. And I is AR 2023-18. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Sorry, I was trying to rush us since we lost an hour, so apologize for that. Oh, we're fine. Okay, so we are on item G. Thank you. Vice Chair Barbo. Thank you. I feel like I'm taking up a lot of space tonight, but excited for all the things we're doing. Um, the item is the opposing the transportation of high-level radioactive waste. Um, so uh, you heard many people make comment about this tonight, and I'll try and keep it short because I think, um, but, you know, New Mexico, as I know, we have been the dumping ground for a lot of our country's waste, multiple types of waste, um, but the nuclear waste is um, particularly scary and rank. This um, proposed plant, as you heard tonight, is, um, you know, proposing to actually transport waste from all over the country into our state by rail. And you also heard tonight, which I believe um, that that level of engagement and, and work throughout our state, bringing that waste into our state, um, is just open for, they actually anticipate they'll probably about 13 um, spills along the way across the lifetime. They just sort of estimate that as, as what's acceptable. Um, and we're here to say it's not acceptable. New Mexico, as we've heard so much tonight, is our beautiful country. Um, we oppose this, and I know that this is um, in support of uh, opposing this at the state level that, um, so that we can actually stop this from happening. You've, um, what maybe wasn't heard is that we don't even have the, um, the storage facility that can hold this kind of ways. There's a whole bunch going on. I don't want to d dive into it too much unless there's some more questions. Um, but I would ask for the support for this that opposes the transportation of high-level radioactive waste throughout our beautiful New Mexico. And is that a motion? For motion. Approval? I'll second that. Any questions, discussions? Uh, Commissioner Benson. 
Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to say I, I support this because I think it's um, the level of risk is too high uh, and lack of information in terms of containing that risk, um, but not opposition towards uh, nuclear power. I, I think that's my clarification. My, my house, I've got um, fully loaded with solar panels. My house has been uh, rated as a greenhouse. Um, I'm, so I'm all for renewable energy, but I'm also um, aware of the, the problems with photovoltaic cells and, and uh, uh, the power generation of, of wind, wind energy versus nuclear energy, which has no carbon emissions. But there is radioactive waste, which is is definitely it's a it's a tool that should be respected and not just treated lightly. And that's what I'm that's what I'm worried about. This is that it is being treated too lightly. We don't have the uh, um, processes in place to contain it. Um, but I do think it's a, a powerful tool for humanity in terms of um, energy for the planet. Uh, long term. But like any tool, whether it be fire or electricity, it needs to be treated with respect and I don't think it's given the respect that it needs. So I, I do support this um, without being in opposition to nuclear power. Thank you. So been moved and seconded. I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes. Item H, Affordable Clean Energy. Chair, Vice Chair Barbo and Commissioner Olivas, who wants to? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to introduce this legislation supporting, uh, a resolution supporting passage of the Local Choice Energy Act at the state level. Uh, to me, I think that this is an important signal for us to send to our legislators in Santa Fe that uh, the Bernalillo County Commission stands behind this uh, tool in the toolbox for uh, increasing access to, to green energy, increasing access to, to all forms of renewable energy through local choice energy, which allows uh, municipalities and other uh, local government entities and, and other entities around the state the option of entering into uh, local choice energy production. And it gives individuals living in those communities the option, again, the choice to utilize those services, uh, thereby increasing the, the market forces on uh, the market forces at will on the uh, the electricity generation sector, and and so I think that this is an important tool, and I think it's an important ask for us to make of our legislators, uh, stating that this is something that that we believe is uh, something that that we ought to have the option of using. And there's a number of communities across the state from very small communities to, to larger cities, uh, Doña Ana County, Las Cruces, places like that, that are supporting this. And again, smaller, more more rural communities that, that see value in this. And if you look across the country, this is something that's been deployed with great success in uh, a, a diversity of states. This, this isn't really a, a conservative, liberal issue. This is really a, an issue of choice and, and using market forces to, to shape the electricity market and, and bring down prices, increase reliability, and uh, increase the amount of renewables on the market. We, we have a, a theme going here tonight, really looking at uh, how we support our environment. We're, we're in crisis with our climate and so many other things, our, our, our biodiversity crash, um, that there's any number of things that, that we need to act on urgently. And this is one tool that, that we can use to, to help move the needle in that direction. So. I want to thank uh, my, my co-sponsor, Vice Chair Barboa, and I also want to acknowledge that we have Alicia Shaw here uh, from the, the Local Choice Energy um, Group to, uh, to answer any questions and, and, and offer her uh, insights. Vice Chair. Thank you. I think uh, you said it um, best, Commissioner Olivas, and it just I, what I also really love about this is this is uh, the, it's that choice, and it can be in a small level, and it could be on a large level. Um, so I'm excited about the opportunities for when this passes at the state legislature. Thank you to Lo Local Choice Energy for bringing it to our attention. I Madam Chair, I make a motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. It passes. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Item I, Sustainability and Climate Action Plan Updates. Commissioner Olivas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this item caps off our, our sort of series here looking at, at sustainability initi initiatives and uh, effect on climate. I don't know if, uh, if Mr. Archuleta and Mr. Divitt want to come up on this item. They are with our Public Works Department and they've done a lot of work on, on this initiative. Uh, with me, uh, offering their their insights and and uh, information on on what the public works department and and our entire county government apparatus has done thus far on climate and sustainability issues and and where we are going. So, I'm really proud to to introduce this, uh, which is really an amendment to the plan that we already have in place that was passed in in October of 2019 that started us on a on a more sustainable path. And this, I think, really seeks to update that and, uh, and perhaps uh, tweak the priorities a little bit and offer a little bit of, a, a bit of guidance to staff so that they can focus their efforts. So I don't know if, uh, if Director Archuleta or Mr. David, if you have anything you want to add. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Olivas, I could give a little bit of background like you covered. Uh, so back in 2019, uh, the commission uh, put us on a path uh, to start developing a sustainability and climate action plan. And with that, they uh, asked us to come back with an outline to study because it is a complex issue. Uh, so we brought that back in August of 2021. Uh, and with the outline that was based on, on the 2019 uh, guidance, um, <clears throat> we got going. We issued a contract uh, and we contracted with the uh, J.D. Pearl and Smith's uh, Sekman Reed to start developing this. And so since then, uh, we've been in a data, we've, we've, uh, we've been in a three phase process and we've completed phase one, which was a data gathering. And so we're in phase two, which is now data processing for all the facilities and such that we have uh, within uh, the county. So this uptake comes at a good time because there's been a lot of developments and issues that have arisen over the last few years regarding uh, our environmental uh, situation, like we've been discussing all night. Um, that's changed. There's some stuff that's been learned, stuff that we can, but so it this update comes at a good time. To refocus us, we wouldn't have lost any work because all we've done up to this point is data gather, gathering and, and processing. So we're at that stage where we are you know, looking at the goals the next step that we would have in there is setting goals for what we have for our our public infrastructure that we have. But with this update, um, Commissioner Olivas has provided some other additional guidance that could be incorporated into that. So, and with that, we stand for questions. As we said, uh, our Fleet and Facilities Director, uh, Jared Devitt, is also here with us. Any questions? Madam Chair, um, again, I just wanted to thank our, our staff here for for their hard work on this, it, this you know really was something that they took the lead on once I once I kind of brought this to their attention that I was interested in this sh issue. Uh, these two gentlemen really worked tirelessly to to get this done in a, in a timely fashion, and uh, and brought me up to speed on on where the county is and where the county isn't, and, and how we can really move forward in a in a good fashion. So I'm I'm really excited about this and the opportunity to to update this resolution in the climate plan and, and really prioritize our investments and I've been very excited about working with you all because um, it's it's clear that, that our staff is coming to this from the mindset of making sure that our investments yield the greatest return. That this isn't just about doing feel good things, this is about uh, looking at where the low hanging fruit is and how we tackle that and then how we move up that chain and continue to see advances or, or in this case reductions in our in our carbon footprint but doing so in a, in a way that respects taxpayer dollars and and prioritizes smart investments. So I'm, I'm really excited about where this will put us. Uh, this does a, a number of things or, or at least sets us up to do those things. And so I'm excited, most excited for the update that, that we'll be seeing soon in the coming months to, to really lay out where we're at with the data gathering and, and how we move forward. So with that, I'll make a motion to, uh, to adopt this resolution. A second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item nine, there are no approval items, so we'll move on to discussion. And we had a discussion item by uh, Commissioner Quesada, Metropolitan Detention Center Regional Facility um, County Manager. Do you have? 
Um, Madam Chair, uh, um, as you know, he had to leave early, and he would like for it to be deferred, <clears throat> excuse me, to the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, item 11 of the next commission meeting will be Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Administrative meeting at 8 p.m. Ken Sanchez Commission Chambers. And if there is no other business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for your patience. Appreciate it. Oh, geez, <laughs>